passes. We don't think that it's going to have a severe effect on the game. They lose a starting linebacker, they lose their place kicker, and possibly the greatest effect could be their number two quarterback. Because the big question at Tennessee this year has been, what will the quarterback position uh, turn out to be? They have two sophomores vying for the starting role. Jeff Francis was chosen earlier in the week. The suspensions were announced yesterday, and Randy Sanders, who was number two, will not be eligible to play in this one game only. That's my feeling about it, Gary. And how about yours? I agree with you, Connie. I don't think it'll have that much effect. What worries me even more is that Tennessee has an academic calendar on the quarter system. And that means that their players have, are still a week or two away from starting classes. The Lobo players have, a, have actually finished their second week of classes, so there hasn't been that competition for their concentration on learning a new offense or learning a new defense. So that gives Tennessee a somewhat of an advantage. The Lobos, last year third in the nation in total offense, averaging almost 470 yards a game. And tonight they go up against one of the nation's premier defenses, that of Coach Johnny Majors. Oh, that's for sure. Anyone who saw the Sugar Bowl last year knows that this is one of the, Tennessee has one of the top defenses. So it'll be strength against strength and very interesting matchup. It's an exciting place here for a football game. They've been having the world's largest tailgate party all afternoon, and now everybody is about set for the kickoff. This is a place that would have been the envy of even P.T. Barnum. The kickoff in just a minute. Here at Neyland Stadium on the campus of the University of Tennessee. 93,000 spectators ready. The coin toss at uh, midfield. It is a gorgeous evening. Sun about to set here over Knoxville, Tennessee. Temperature probably in the mid-70s. There is just a slight northeasterly breeze that just has an effect of cooling things off very nicely, Gary. Well... Those, who, those players who were here in 83 know this is a much cooler night. It's a beautiful night for football. I don't know anywhere in the country you could have a better night than we're having right here tonight. The Lobo football team is in good physical condition. Todim, the trainer in his 30th season, said that the football team is in the best condition he can ever recall it at this time. Only Donnie Gassaway is not at full strength. Donnie had arthroscopic surgery on his knee 15 days ago, but... They will be able to use him tonight if, if they want to. He is here. He's suited up, and I talked with him in the hotel today, and he's ready to go. He, he still is slowed a little bit by the injury, but he wants to play very much. I was amused at his comment at the airport yesterday morning. I said, Donnie, you're going to be ready to play. And he said, yeah. He said, but they'll just use me if they need me. <laughs> well, I'm sure they're going to need him here in Tennessee. Well, the, the thing is they can't let happen is they can't let a, the team get uh, slowed, the humidity and so forth, slow them down, such as happened in the opener at Texas Tech last year. So they're going to try to work as many people into the lineup and keep it as fresh as possible. 93,000 orange-blooded fans here at Neyland Stadium. And just a handful of Lobo fans are here tonight. And Louie and Lucy Lobo are here. I saw them in the elevator at the hotel, but I could not get them to say anything. They never say a word. Maybe it's bad luck, huh? Maybe they were just trying to, trying to uh, not cast any bad spells on things. And we're looking at Mr. Crum for the University of New Mexico. Thomas Crum, number six, posted as the deep back for the Lobos, who will be receiving the kick of Phil Rich, the 165-pound junior kicker for the orange-clad University of Tennessee Volunteers, who last year were ranked fourth in the nation, won the Sugar Bowl and the SEC. And in the preseason polls this year, they're picked to be number 10. Some of the players have as their goal the national championship. And here is the opening kickoff. Crum waits. Crum feeling it at the goal line. And out of bounds on the 17-yard line. Excellent kickoff by Rich. Wasn't that something? Thomas waited on the ball thinking it was going to go out, but it took a bounce inward, and he, he really had to field it. Credit Keith DeLong with the defensive work as they bring the ball in on the 17-yard line of the Lobos, and the Lobos run and shoot offense ready to go for the first time. One of the nation's top offenses. So good that it was written up in the American Football Coaches Manual and offensive coordinator Ben Griffith 
was the author of that article. Here's Billy Rucker spreading left. Looking for Whitehead. Overthrows incomplete. Covered by Victor Peppers, 155-pound junior. Out of Albany, New York, where he was state indoor hurdles champion for 60 yards. You know what? There was no containment on Billy Rucker as he rolled to his left. If that, as that play develops, they're going to have to contain him. That means keep the ball from rolling outside. Billy could keep it and go. The Lobos' poise and pride will be tested here in Tennessee tonight. That's Rogers in motion to the left. Rucker to Mathis. Down on the 21, picked up four. It'll be third and six as Charles Davis made the graduate. He is the only graduate student on the field tonight. Holds a degree in political science. Right, now, Second in voting for MVP in the Sugar Bowl. That was a quick release pass out to Mathis. And Mathis, not many people make a one-on-one -on -one tackle like that. Davis looks like a graduate student. He looked like he's had experience at this. 192-pounder from New Paltz, New York. Third and six Lobos from their 21 as Billy Rucker rallies them. The Gallup Senior. There in the run and shoot spread. That's Mathis in the short motion. And the swing to Mathis. Going for the first down. Trying. Didn't get there. It'll be fourth and one. Darren Miller, the right inside linebacker, made the hits. He was second in team hits last year, 67 unassisted. There's that quick release. They had a blitzing linebacker. They flip it out here. Now he has a, a man in front blocking, which is out of your picture. But the second, the defensive pursuit, the second man in, number 45, that's a, that's a dandy. He, that kept them out of, out of the first down. Andre Kramer back to receive his run. Keller will punt. Keller's averaged over 42 yards in three years. Had a lot of trouble here three years ago. Gets it away, a hard rush. Kramer waiting on his 38th fair catch. So on the Tennessee 38-yard line, first and 10 for the Volunteers. Action-packed Lobo football on Channel 14, brought to you in part by Coors Premium Beer. The beer with the difference worth tasting. Coors is the one. Tennessee 38, first and 10, Vols ball. At quarterback, freshman Jeff Francis out of the eye. Slot to the left, and the right end is split. Francis wants to pass. Hard rush by Mady. Hard rush by Cole. And Crum backing up from right corner. The intended receiver, Terrence Cleveland, a 5'9", 154-pound freshman out of Sweetwater, Tennessee. And there's a look at the press box. We're on the upper level there at the south 40-yard line. Tennessee came with a long pass on the first playoff, a running fake. They're just merely, that was good, good uh, strategy. They were trying to exploit what they thought was the Lobos' weakness on defense, the long pass last year. Second and 10, Tennessee at their 38. Lobos with a full front. Long count by Francis. And the draw play to the tailback, Keith Davis. Their premier running back, and Davis rolls for about three before Fred Mady made the tackle. Three years ago, Fred Mady came in here as a freshman. In the first game of his career, he had been picked as the WAC Defensive Player of the Week in a game against Utah. Came in here the next week, had his knee injured, missed the entire season. He's now a junior. Third and seven, Tennessee at its 41. Big down here, Connie. This is, if the Lobos stop him, this would be a good shot in the arm for their defense. It's a real test. Francis checking signals. 93,000 fans watching anxiously to see the performance of Jeff Francis. That good protection. And incomplete intended for Davis, who heard the footsteps of Umdenstock. Number 51, Bob Umdenstock. The uh, Lobos call him a Lobo on defense, and it's kind of a rover monster back sort of thing. You're right, but give credit to number 47 in your picture there, Torrey Edwards, who kept contain on the quarterback and made him throw the football. Good point, uh, Gary. Torrey Edwards, 225-pound junior college transfer. Bob Garman back to punt, averaged 39.1 last year. 210-pound junior, and Terrence Mathis waits on the Lobo 20. Mathis at the 16. Shirt tail tackle at the 18. 
The hit by David Poole from Cincinnati, Ohio. So the Lobos will take over at their own 18. They started the first sequence of downs at their 17. That's a 44-yard punt for Bobby Garman. Well, I can't help but feel good for the Lobo defense who kept the number 10 team in the country from making a first down on their first possession. On my hat's off to them. The Lobos in the spread for the run and shoot with Mathis in long motion to the right side, to the wide side of the field. The left-handed quarterback, Rucker, looking for Mathis at the 25, out of bounds near the 28, almost a 10-yard pickup. Out of the run and shoot attack for Mathis. Uh, Terrence Mathis, 18th nationally last year in all-purpose running. Now, still no containment on Rucker. You see, there's not an orange shirt in your picture. Now, Billy... Billy did have uh, Mathis in the flat, but there is nobody there to contain him. Billy will end up running that pretty soon and make, making good yardage. Second down, half a yard to go inside the Lobo 28. Rucker to the pitch back. <clears throat> Rogers, but Rogers has the first down. Now you saw Rogers start in motion <clears throat> just at about the time of the snap. And what he was doing was getting in the same position as a wishbone trailing halfback would be that's and he right. takes the pitch here that's right now Billy knows he's there Billy does not even look for him because Rogers must keep what's called a pitch relationship so that Billy can turn and pitch it to him without looking which he did first and ten Lobos from their 30 yard line Mathis number 15 Tennessee with a nose guard up front Mathis again and he has it at the 35 pinpoint passing by Billy Rucker, the senior from Gallup, who last year passed for almost 2,500 yards and 10 touchdowns. The left corner, number 86, Terry McDaniel, a member of the Vol track team, makes the tackle here. That's a nifty five-yard gain. Now, that those will mount up there. Now you've got a second and five, a good situation to make your first. Keep your drive going. Lobo's moving the ball against an even front this time. It's actually an eight-man front. Somewhat spread. And Mathis hit behind the line of scrimmage. Stranger in the Lobo backfield is Tyrone Robinson, 230-pound senior. Well, you noticed that it was an eight-man front. It's too bad there wasn't a, a trap play called in here. Well, there was. It was a tackle trap play. But a guard trap play to the, to the remaining back would have been a dandy on this call. At the Lobo 33, third down and seven. the flags as you see here is the referee Gene Wirtz who is a WAC official illegal procedure signal against New Mexico he is a WAC official as is the linesman and the field judge tonight and the other officials are from the SEC uh, you can down there on the field you can only imagine what what how hard, difficult it is to hear down there with 95,000 people 93,000 excuse me in the stands the largest football stadium in the south and the second largest college football stadium in America. Only Michigan is bigger. Two slot backs. Glenn Rogers is the one in motion. Third and a bunch. And it's going to be fourth and more as Robinson makes the tackle on Rucker. So there's no score so far. And we have played a little over four minutes here in Knoxville. And Keller back for his second punt of the night. And Andre Kramer is stationed on the Tennessee 38. Keller a senior. It might have been partially tipped. Kramer at his 43 to midfield. And caught in a wave of Lobos at the Lobo 46-yard line. Tennessee has it. Score tied. We'll be back. Here is a replay of a 
touchdown play by Davis, the tailback. He's going from 46 yards. He goes untouched, and Tennessee leads with 10-10 to go in the first quarter and the try for point to come. Phil Rich will try the extra point. It's up and it's good and the score. Tennessee seven, the Lobos nothing. Back in Knoxville. So the Tennessee Volunteers strike four minutes and 50 seconds deep into the first quarter. And Phil Rich will be kicking off from the 35, a new college rule this year, kicking from the 35 instead of the 40. So we should see more run back action. And here is the run back of Crum. Out to the 33-yard line. The tackle by Vernon Bass from Gallatin, Tennessee. Put it uh, just inside the Lobo 33, where the Lobo run and shoot uh, attack will be called upon once more. And the Lobos uh, had happened something that they had feared. They wanted to bend but not break. Didn't want to give up the big play. And uh, unfortunately for the Wolfpack, that's what happened on the 46-yard touchdown dash of Keith Davis, who just did the Tennessee Walls before 93,000 folks here. First and 10 for the Lobos. Rucker to Mathis, to 40. To the Lobo 45 and a flag throw. Maybe face mask. Yes, it was. Now, the Lobos, it's a very important for them. They just got stung. Defensively, they just got stung. On the sidelines now, the defense should be regrouping and say, look, we played them tough for the first possession. We can, we can do it again. Somebody obviously missed an assignment. But uh, the face mask penalty there is assessed. We'll tack on some more yardage onto that nice 12-yard pass uh, reception by Mathis. Mathis is open early. Billy turned and found him after he had passed the linebackers. Now he's... Now he has to evade the cornerback. There you saw the face mask. Ruled incidental in a yes. five-yard penalty. It's at the 50, first and 10 for the Lobos. Rucker sets up. And a one-hopper to Mathis. It'll be second and 10. Watch the Lobos begin their quest for the WAC title as they battle the tough BYU Cougars live from BYU Stadium next Saturday at noon on KGSW TV Channel 14. We'll be there to cover it for you. BYU opened the season today with a 45 to nothing victory over Utah State. The Tennessee defense is begging Billy to run with the ball. They're keeping poor contain. They're really trying to cover the receivers. They it's obvious they would rather have Billy run with it than throw. 3-4 front for Tennessee with the outside linebackers walked off the line. Billy Rucker dances away from trouble. And under the pressure, cannot get the ball away to Arbon, Keith Arbon. The left wide receiver, a transfer from all Southland, uh, from uh, University of Texas Arling, where he was all Southland Conference. Coverage by number one, Andre Kramer. And it'll be third and ten for the Lobos at midfield. Billy wanted to throw a crossing pattern there, but it was covered, so he had to dance out. It was an excellent job to get the, rid of the ball and not take the loss. Mathis five catches tonight for 35 yards. Lobos trail 7-0. Nine and a half minutes to go in the first half. It's about a quarter to eight in Tennessee, and the sun is just setting. Rucker on a three-step drop, nailed from behind by Dale Long. Dale Jones made the hit from behind. He is the heart of the Tennessee defense. Made a bunch of big plays last year, 26 to be exact, and here he makes another one. He had a little bit of help from uh, another volunteer. It's a loss of two, fourth and 12 for the pack at their own 48-yard line. And you had a good look at Dale Jones. They call him the hit man here in Tennessee. Keller back for his third punt. The kicking game really hurt the Lobos here three years ago. Keller gets it away short. A Lobo bounce. And killed by Murmur at the five-yard line of Tennessee. Well, 
Here the defense faces their test. They, for once they have the ball deep into their territory. What the defense tries to do now is get Tennessee to punt it back and gain some field position for the offense. Offensively, the Lobos uh, uh, have not looked bad. Not, they haven't dominated, but they haven't looked bad yet. There are still a lot to, of uh, problems they can pose for the Tennessee offense. Two tight ends for Tennessee, Hendricks and Middlebrooks, out of the eye formation. And storming up the middle is the fullback, William Howard. For five, he weighs two and a quarter from Lima, Ohio. That big Tennessee offensive interior averages 273 pounds. Uh, you have Smith, 272, Galbraith, 257, Robinson, 280, Bruin, 285, and Wilkerson, 272, is the offensive interior. Second and five from the Tennessee 10. William Howard carries it again for four to his 14, where Kelvin Johnson makes the tackle. The Lobos' weak side linebacker, 207-pound senior from Dallas. Nothing fancy about this. Drive block and give it to your 235-pound running back. And he, Howard does a nice job spinning out of that tackle, but he doesn't quite break free. 77 Mady, 47 Edwards for the Lobos. Power eye for Tennessee. Tandem eye. First down, Howard storming over the middle to the 17 or 18, where Tom Bradford filled the hole for the Lobos. But Tennessee just bulldozes it out of the trouble at the five. They used that superior strength and size, and then Howard jumped over. You were right in your description when he went over for that first down. He leaped the line, got his first. Lobos with the forefront. Sort of a conglomerate secondary. That's Clint Scale. Their flashy split end who made the catch for about a five-yard gain. Joey Clint Scales, four touchdowns last year, averaged almost 20 yards a catch. And he's a 200-pound, six-foot senior from Knoxville. In high school, he was an all-state quarterback. In fact, Tennessee has several players who uh, are great athletes who were high school quarterbacks now playing other positions. Here's the sprint draw, and there's Davis, the man who scored the touchdown, and he rolls to the 32-yard line. And you can see the Tennessee strength and quickness out there. And that was the play that he ran for the touchdown to the other side. Sprint draw, there's the uh, Howard leading up through the hole on the linebacker. The Lobo linebackers are playing at a, at, a, at, a, at a pretty deep. They're off the line of scrimmage. 25 Anthony Stevenson, 51 Umden stock for the Lobos. Francis. At quarterback, number 19, the sophomore from Mount Prospect, Illinois. Three-step drop. Incomplete. It'll be second and 10 at the Volunteer 32. Intended for Vince Carter, a junior from Nashville, Tennessee. This live Lobo football broadcast on Channel 14 is brought to you in part by Coors Light, the silver bullet. There's no slowing down with the silver bullet. Away to Keith Davis, the running back, the 193-pound sophomore. Joe Sells drops him just inside the Tennessee 35. Davis led volunteer rushing last year with 684 yards. It's on the Tennessee 34. Third down and eight to go for the volunteers. This is a big play in this game right here. Indeed it is. Mady at nose guard. Francis. Caught at the 42, close to the line to gain. Clink scales on the reception, coverage by Stevenson. And let's see if there's a, it is a first down with about the length of the ball to spare. Well thrown. Clink scale is the, is the latest in a long line of wide receivers from Willie Galt and Kevin Murray to, to uh, uh, now Joey Klinkscale. Oh, they just made it on third down by about the length of the ball. First and 10 at Tennessee's 42. Away to Miller. Midfield, out of bounds at the Lobo 48. Close to a first down again. Hit by Mike Kirkendall, the Lobo strong safety. 200-pound transfer from Longview, Texas. 
Anthony Miller, a junior college All-American out of Pasadena, California. Just transferred into Tennessee. And uh, they are going to have to measure to see if it's the first down. That's a quick screen. You now watch the blockers out in front. They, the receiver actually retreats a couple yards, gets some blockers out. Now Thomas Crum, number six, although he didn't make the tackle, he did the right thing and kept the ball inside so that Pursuit could catch it. 28 for the Lobos is Danny Lara, L-A-R-A, transfer from Tyler, Texas Junior College. Tennessee did not make the first down. Tennessee has moved the ball from its five-yard line to the Lobo 48-yard line. That's 47 yards in something like eight or ten plays. And it's going to be second down and just inches to go. About a plug of chewing tobacco. One of our spotters tonight, uh, our spotters are both from Tennessee, but one of them is Bobby Gratz, who played football for Tennessee some 20 years ago. Another spotter. Bill Spiller and Ron Gratz is our statistician all from Tennessee. Francis has a lot of time and then dumps it off incomplete. Looking for 89 Hendricks Tim Hendricks the big tight end coverage by Laura Danny Laura of the Lobos secondary it'll be third down at inches for Tennessee. The Lobos blitz that time Kelvin Johnson came in the, the backer the running back had to block him. And that left it open for Tom Cole on rushing from the right side to force that pass. An overflow crowd here at Neyland Stadium in Tennessee. There's the first down by Davis. Or was it by Miller? It was Miller, number 35. Oh, I beg your pardon, Howard, 35. He weighs 225 six-foot junior and Tom Cole gets credit for the stop it's on the Lobo 44 as Tennessee has punched it 51 yards since taking the punt in short yardage that play with Howard uh, leaping over is going to be very difficult to stop now this is Jim Miller in at fullback carving off some more volunteer yardage as the Lobos trail seven nothing with five minutes to go in the first period Philip Vaughn, a transfer from Northwest Mississippi College, number 45 for the Lobos, makes the stop. Rather abruptly, Philip made the stop. Yeah, Coach Jim Berryman says he has a mean streak out there on the field that football coaches like to see. For a second down, about five to go for Tennessee at the Wolfpack 39, as Tennessee relentlessly pounds the ball. Coming up from behind is Orlando Level, number 68 for the Lobos, a 260-pound junior from New Orleans as Keith Davis number 28 carries the ball now Orlando he'll try to cut inside Orlando but there's uh, Danny Laura to, to make the tackle that was good run support on that play it's on the Lobo 40 slight loss for the Tennessee offense Keith Davis has carried five times for 59 yards now they're in a pro set in a backfield Francis for Clink Scales, it was deflected by Torrey Edwards, but Clink Scales caught it anyway. And then Stevenson knocked him out after the first down at the Lobo 31-yard line. Gee, let's see if he's inbounds here. Yeah, yeah, he is. It was an excellent catch. That's uh, that's twice now on this drive that they've used that play to get a uh, to gain their first. Lobo's in a forefront. There's a sprint draw to Davis. He's down on the 25-yard line. Kelvin Johnson got a piece of him, number 49, to make him start losing his balance. That Davis, number 28, can shift, uh, shift gears, and he can shift direction very well. He's an elusive runner, young fella. Got a brilliant future here at Tennessee. Mike Kirkendall, number 23, for the Lobos, also in on the defense. Kevin Simons into the game for Tennessee. 285, his teammates call him the freezer at offensive right tackle. Second and four. There goes Miller. First down, Lobo 15. Tennessee has pounded it 80 yards, and they're 15 yards away from Royal Soil. Quick trap play. Number 75 trapped on Fred Mady, and linebacker has to fill on that, but usually... If they're going with flow, 
They are running out of there. This is KGSW TV, Channel 14, Albuquerque. The Lobos trail 7-0, three minutes left, first quarter. Tennessee threatening, first and 10 on the Wolfpack 15. Out of the eye. To Miller on the kneeling reception at the 10. Well, I've heard of Hail Mary passes, <laughs> but that's a new reception. That's a Hail Mary reception. reception. Yes, it is. Well, I think what he, he did, he went down, the pass was probably higher than what he thought. I mean, he went down to his knees, and once, of course, in college ball, when your knee touches, the ball is dead. Francis, the sophomore quarterback, making his debut with four completions and seven attempts for 87 yards, starting to take away some of the question mark about quarterback. From the 11, the bomb. It's more like a mortar. <laughs> yeah. Well, what he saw, he changed the call at the line of scrimmage. He saw a lot of, that there's one-on-one -on -one coverage at the top or to the left of your screen as, it see, as you see now. And uh, uh, Thomas Crum was out there all alone on the man, but he ran out of space and he had to unload it. It's on the 10. Third down, five to go. Wide on the left, Thomas Woods. His brother played in the backfield today for Vanderbilt against Alabama on television. And a catch by Cleveland for the first down at the Lobo four. Thomas Crum and Mike Kirkendall on the tackle. But the little freshman from Sweetwater, Tennessee, does some sweet work for the volunteers, and it's first and goal. All right, they cleared the area with a wide receiver and then sent, and then sent uh, him into the into that area just cleared. Kirkendall's right there on him, made this, and, but not quite in position to intercept the ball. Thomas Crum left his and got the tackle. Two tight ends for Tennessee now in the tandem eye. So they're gonna go with the horses at the four. A flag on the play. Whistle stop everything. Howard 35 was the man with the ball. Referee Gene Wirtz from Colorado. Illegal procedure against Tennessee. That's the first uh, foul by Tennessee tonight. Yes, it is. Well, that, that one uh, uh, face mask penalty. Oh, that's right, yeah. First one on this drive, but this gives the Lobos some chance because Jim Berriman doesn't want to see a strength situation, a short yardage situation where Tennessee can use their superior size and strength. This, uh, this is a big penalty for, uh, or could be very meaningful for the Lobos. Tennessee so far tonight with 138 yards total offense and 142 to go in the first quarter. They lead 7 0. Here's the sprint draw out of the eye. And Mady, number 77, makes the wrap up after preliminary contact by 28, Laura. Keith Davis, number 28 for Tennessee, is the man carrying the ball. You see that little move to the left and then back to the right. It's a quick penetration by Lara there, though, that, that stopped the play from going wide and gave Fred a chance to pick up the tackle. Down on the seven-yard line. Second down goal to go for Tennessee. Six-five goal line defense, and Francis trips on one of his own players as he comes back trying to set up for the pass. The Lobos can gain a moral victory now if they can stop them on this third down and force them into a field goal situation. This is a this is a real test right here. A big, big down for the Lobo defense. Francis, the quarterback, 204 pounds, 6'3", sophomore. Number 19. Third and goal at the Lobo 11-yard line. Under half a minute to go in the first quarter. And whistles again at the snap. And let's see what this one's about. A flag on the line of scrimmage at the near side of the field. So there may have been something like a false start in there. Illegal procedure. Probably what happened, one of the Tennessee linemen probably moved his hand after getting set. Yes, now this represents a different situation. They're actually playing a short prevent defense now because it's uh, third and goal on the 16-yard line, so they've taken out a couple interior linemen, brought back in Philip Vaughn. 
As you see the penalty acknowledged, but now you've got a short prevent situation here. Third down and goal at the 16. So two penalties have moved the Volunteers back 10 yards. They're in the eye, slot right, left end split, and they go uh, with the heavy artillery right up the middle. And Davis, now a flag is thrown back in the secondary. Perhaps some sort of a conflict between clink scales and crumb. The flag thrown down on the seven yard line after the ball was dead. Boy, we just missed. I hope the viewers didn't miss Joe Sells making a great play there. Took on the blocker and still made the tackle one on one. One guy controlling two. You don't find that very often, especially for a converted running back slash tight end slash linebacker. The word from referee Gene Wirtz. And the quarter has ended. And unsportsmanlike conduct against Tennessee. They're going to be penalized more. Back with the second quarter in a minute. Yeah. Hey, watch the Lobos begin their quest for the WAC title as they battle the tough BYU Cougars live from BYU Stadium next Saturday at noon on KGSW-TV Channel 14. So it's still fourth down for Tennessee and a field goal attempt from the Lobo 23. It'll be a 33-yard try. And the Tennessee kicker is Rich. Well, he's not rich, that's his name. <laughs> up, up, and away, and good, and it's Tennessee 10. Lobos nothing, five seconds deep in the second quarter. Back in packed, Neyland Stadium in Tennessee. Say, watch a great interconference matchup as the Lobos travel to Jones Stadium in Lubbock, Texas in a couple of weeks to take on the tough Texas Tech Red Raiders live. Don't miss that action Saturday, September 20th at 6 p.m. on KGSW-TV, Channel 14. Oh, what a sight here at Neyland Stadium. It's Mr. Reves, I believe, Connie. Oh, yeah, the place kicker, and he's one of the 10 players who has been suspended for one game for violating an NCAA rule. Players are allowed some uh, complimentary passes, or, or they are allowed to let family members or other students from their college come into the game but they cannot allow anybody else to do that under NCAA rules and that is what the violation has been the same problem has occurred at Nebraska which you heard about earlier this week it's a touchback as the ball goes into the end zone the Lobos will take it on their 20 yard line as Pat Capitola number 85 was the man who was trying to field it so uh, Gary it's it's a great possibility that with that NCAA rule we may be hearing about this particular problem at a lot of colleges around the country well, and the information about that possibly surfacing in the near future. That rule has been changed the last two or three years, and it's not, uh, it's not well understood. I think that's basically the problem. All right, Billy Rucker in here now at quarterback. And boy, the Lobo offense had a long time to rest. They sure I, did. I don't recall, Gary, a football game in recent memory when an offensive unit was off the field so long. The Lobo defensive unit, man, they must have been eight, nine minutes of the first quarter out there. And it's time for them to assert themselves here and get a couple of first downs and at least give that defense some opportunity to recover. Tennessee leads 10-0. Rucker in the cockpit. Looks like crazy option here and Mathis is nailed on the 21. A flag on the play over at the far side of the field. Rucker has been sacked twice tonight but has completed five for eight prior to this play. This is a difficult play to execute as Billy shows. That's the good news that they did it without fumbling. The bad news is it didn't go anywhere. His five completions good for 81 yards. Lobos are 0 for 3 on third down conversions tonight. Here's an illegal procedure call against them, declined by Tennessee. Tennessee takes the play to bring up third and nine, a long nine inside the Lobo 21-yard line. Boy, isn't that a beautiful panorama there? It really is. 93,000. Gorgeous night here. 
Just a cool little gentle breeze. Just an excellent night for football. Billy Rucker on a quarterback draw. It's three out to the 24, and it's going to be fourth and kick. Robbie Scott and Darren Miller on the tackle. Scott, defensive left tackle, 275, a high school All-American out of Decatur, Tennessee. So Keller comes on to putt again. Keller's putting average tonight has not been particularly impressive. But he's been kicking under pressure. Kramer back on the 40-yard line. A Lobo bounce. Bouncing on this new pro turf here at Tennessee. My goodness, that's about a 30, 35-yard roll. And the Lobos are just going to let it flame out down on the seven-yard line of Tennessee. What a punt. But it wasn't beautiful, but under pressure. Now, every time tonight, Tennessee has come after Ron Keller, hoping to, to block it or at least to force him into a situation where he shanks it. Because in 83, Ron had a bad night as a freshman in front of this same crowd. That's 70 yards net on that punt. And about half of it was rolled. Hendricks and Middlebrooks at tight end as Tennessee will go to the power eye with the backs to the cliff. Thirteen ten to go in the half. Davis. Four yards. No, I beg your pardon. Howard. That's the fullback. Howard running out of that eye formation. And we have alluded to the fact there are 70, uh, 93,000 folks here tonight at the spring game here in Tennessee. They drew 73,800 for the spring game. That's 30,000 more than ever before had been drawn for a spring game, according to the Guinness Book of Records. Gary talked to Mr. Guinness this afternoon to confirm that. <laughs> there is a fumble. And Howard out to the 11-yard line. Loose ball. Tennessee's got it. It's going to be third and a pretty good bunch. Apparently, when they've got their backs to the wall, they're just going to give it to the big guy, Howard, and go straight ahead or off tackle, try to root out that first down. That's the way the last long drive started. But this time, Howard started without the ball. Third and six. Lobo's in a four front. Plink scales. Caught by Stevenson. And is it enough for the first down? I think so. Yes, it is. On the 17. Had less than a yard to spare, but... Uh, it's obvious that their game plan is on that uh, five yard necessary for a third down. Uh, they'd like to go outside one on one with Mr. Klinkscale. He's tough to stop because he can catch that in front of you. So it's first and 10 Tennessee from its 17 yard line. Next week Tennessee entertains Mississippi State here. Keith Davis the tailback near the 20 yard line. Tennessee has only four seniors starting on offense and only three on defense. The Lobos started five seniors on offense and five on defense. Let's watch Kelvin Johnson, 49, step up. He got blocked, but there's Danny Lara and the uh, pursuit from inside coming up to make the play. Lobos are getting a little bit tougher against the run right now. Keller has punted four times for an average of 46.8, including that 70-yarder on his last effort. The eye formation for Tennessee. And a little fullback pop play by Howard for about three or four yards as he just uh, blasted away behind Galbraith, the left guard at 257, Smith, the left tackle at 272, and Tom Bradford, the right tackle for the uh, left tackle for the Lobos, made the stop at 250. And a Lobo is shaken up. Haven't been, been able to discern the number at this point. Todim out there attending him. We're going to take a quick break and back Tennessee leading. Back in Tennessee, Connie Alexander with Gary Ness and 93,000 avid Tennessee fans. Francis sets up to pass. Incomplete, intended for Panuska near the 30-yard line. Umdenstock on the defense, number 51. Umdenstock, 200-pound senior, 27 years old, 
from Des Moines, Iowa. That was he a was a pitcher for the Kansas City Royals, the White Sox, and Cincinnati in their farm teams. Hurt his arm. No longer able to play professional baseball. And has become a football player, and he is a very fine one. It is punt formation for Tennessee, fourth and about four. Garmin putting. Lovely spiral to Mathis on his 32. 11-yard return to the Lobo 43. 10-34 left in the half. Back in a minute. Option play. Pitch Rogers. Rogers turns the corner to midfield. Nice game by Rogers. Good execution by Billy Rucker. Tyrone Robinson and Victor Peppers on the tackle. Robinson, a 230-pound uh, right outside linebacker. And the Lobos take it into Tennessee property. And they're only about two and a half yards away from a first down just outside Tennessee's 49. A good look there at Billy Rucker. And a first down as Burgess hauls the mail for five yards. Kevin Burgess, 187 pound senior fullback from Sulmer, California. Brought down by Keith DeLong, whose dad, Steve DeLong, was an All-American here at Tennessee in 1964. And now the wave is being executed by the fans here in Tennessee. That's the roar you hear in the background. Lobos on the Tennessee 44, and a pitch to Rogers. Rogers down the far sideline. He could go. Yeah, bye-bye. Excellent work by Billy Rucker as he pitched at the very last split second to Rogers. There is a flag, however, back up field at the far side of the field on the 34-yard line. And the touchdown may be nullified. We're seeing a, a change in the offensive strategy. That whole series, the first three plays since the last time out, have been from the wishbone and executed well. Unfortunately, that miscue cost them, but uh, this presents some problems for the Tennessee defense now. A 15-yard penalty against the Lobos. Takes the ball back to the Tennessee 44-yard line. So the foul occurred down on the 29 of Tennessee. Tends to quiet the crowd down, right? Sure did. Hush. Made that wave calm. Burgess to the 40. This is a supreme test for the Lobos run and shoot attack. Last year, averaged 469 and a half yards a game and just kept building momentum more and more as the season progressed. It's second and six for the Lobos on the Tennessee 40. Well, this is the run part of it. The Lobos use the wishbone offense as their run. The wishbone is a good offense. It has a lot of simplicity, a lot of aggressiveness in it. And Burgess hacks away for two or three before Keith DeLong makes the tackle on him. Keith DeLong is starting there where Kelly Ziegler would have been the starter. Ziegler is one of the players who is under a one-game suspension for violating that NCAA rule. The ball on the 38 of Tennessee. Third and four. It's a short four. Again, the wishbone set. Both ends are split. Tennessee with an even front defensively. And Billy Rucker fights close to the first down yardage, and I believe he made it. Brian Hunt, the middle guard, 259 from DeSoto, Texas, made the tackle. First down for the Lobos. They trailed 10-0. 8.24 to go in the first half. And the Lobos are on the move now with a first down on the Tennessee 34. Credit Shane Hall, number eight, leading through there on that lead block to make the, to give uh, Billy the space to get that first down. Arbon split to the right, Whitehead to the left. And the Lobos in a full house wishbone set. And it's to Rogers, makes the turn and gets inside the 30 yard line before Darren Miller, the right inside linebacker, finds him. Miller, 236 from Flemington, New Jersey. Put the ball on the Tennessee 30 yard line. What this does is it keeps it keeps those orange shirts from penetrating the line of scrimmage. Now they've got to float down the line to stop all three options. It's really ch created a change in the way that Tennessee plays defense. Second and six. Tennessee 30. 
to Whitehead. Batted down at the last instant by Terry Brown. 175 pound senior from Macon, Georgia. Whitehead, the intended receiver. Caught 59 passes in his first two years for the Lobos. Sat out last year. It's going to be third and six. Terry Brown makes a great play. That He got his fingertips on it, or that would have been six. Looked like that pass was right on target. It was. And Whitehead can catch him. Third and six. Again, the wishbone. off to Burgess. Burgess has the first down and plenty to spare down to the 12-yard line as Bobby Majors looks on. That's Johnny. Bobby Major, <laughs> Johnny Majors, I meant to say. Twice National Coach of the Year at Pitt. Had the national champions there in 1976. Coach Tony Dorsett here at Tennessee. His record is 60 wins, 40 losses, five ties in nine years. All right, it's first down and 10 for the Lobos, and the Lobos cannot hear because of the roar of the crowd. The fans are getting into it now. New Mexico 12 rushes for 43 yards tonight, and that wishbone is working, as Gary Ness has pointed out, and a timeout is being taken here on the field in Tennessee. Paul Cates talking with Billy Rucker. We'll be back in a minute. Back live in Tennessee, Billy Rucker rallying the Lobo troops. First down, 10 to go on the Tennessee 13. Lobos trail 10-0. Rucker pitches to Rogers. Rogers trying to get around the corner. Good move by Rogers to the nine-yard line of Tennessee. Charles Davis makes the tackle, a four-yard gain for the Lobos. They're going to put it down near the 10, make it about a three-yard gain. Billy Rucker can read the option, pitches well. Look at that block out in front by who was that? Was that Whitehead? And a nice spin there. Get some extra yards by Glenn Rogers. On the Tennessee 10. Second and seven. Lobos threatening. Tennessee sweating. Burgess for two. Burgess, six carries for 32 yards tonight. Robbie Scott, defensive left tackle. High school All-American from Decatur, Tennessee. Makes the stop on the Tennessee 8. And Darren Miller, the right inside linebacker. Shake it up for Tennessee and Mike Kelly goes in for him a freshman a freshman at the right inside linebacker see if the Lobos try to go toward that freshman it is third and five on the eight yard line Lobos ball deep in Tennessee territory crowd roaring Billy Rucker hands it off to Burgess Burgess fighting to the three maybe the two yard line and it's close to the first down for Kevin Burgess and Keith DeLong, 220-pounder, sophomore, made the tackle. Oh, look at that trap block in there. And that Billy Rucker has to make his automatics with sign language because the noise is so great there, he can't call automatics. They're coming up to the, to the line of scrimmage with a basic wishbone call, and then he gives them the direction Here's by using the sign language. A measurement. It was third down, and it's first and goal to go for the Lobos. First and goal, the score, Tennessee 10, New Mexico nothing. 6.49 to go in the second period here in Knoxville, Tennessee. The ball just outside the Tennessee 2. Stay with the wishbone here. That's their short yardage offense. Two split ends, wishbone configuration, and a flag. I'm not sure what that signal is. Now he gives an illegal procedure signal. I think he was signaling trying to stop the clock. Lobos come to the line of scrimmage, but the referee is still over at the far sideline conversing. Johnny Majors is making an appeal to the fans to uh, keep down the noise because he does not want to be penalized or his team does not want to be penalized. Still a discussion here by the officials. 
And referee Gene Wirtz coming across the field now to talk to Majors. He was just over at the Lobo side of the field. And we are not uh, privy to the conversations, of course. Perhaps we'll be able to pick up a signal here in a minute. Ascertain what's going on. It's first and goal for the Lobos down on the two-yard line. There was one signal for illegal procedure given by the referee Gene Wirtz. As we look at Billy Rucker. Now a walk-off against the Lobos. It's a fine of five yards to the Tennessee seven. Dead ball foul, illegal procedure. And just why uh, all the conferences, I'm not sure. No, I'm not either. But this makes it a completely different situation for the Lobos now. That they'll stay with their wishbone, I believe. But they'll probably have to put it in the air once. They do have a fresh package of first downs. First and goal from the seventh. Burgess, bangs, hacks, five yards. Brought down by Brown and DeLong. It's somewhat of an equalizer when number 33 shows you the strength in his legs there. Wow, look at all those orange shirts draped around him. Second and goal. Burgess scores! Touchdown for the Lobos, and it's 10 to 6. So the Lobos, with a determined drive, hammer it in. Time to assert themselves, and that they did. Look at the leg drive and number 33, Kevin Burgess. Burgess, nine carries, 45 yards, and a touchdown tonight. And the try for extra point coming up. Brent Kelly will hold. Bill Bell will attempt the extra point, 15 for 16 last year. It's on the tee on the way on the boards, and it's 10 to 7, Tennessee, back in a minute. Mexican National. Hello again from Tennessee. This is Connie Alexander with Gary Ness on the campus of the University of Tennessee, founded in 1794. And Bill Bell going to kick off. And Thomas Woods is the deep back. Back on the Tennessee three. The Lobos trail 10-7 now. 5.55 to go in the first half. Well, the Lobos thought going into this season that their offensive line was going to be the, one of the strongest points of their team. And let's give Parr, Donaldson, Maney, McCabe, and Luther credit. They control the line of scrimmage on that long drive. Tennessee, 17 carries for 104 yards rushing tonight. The Lobos, 16 carries for 71 yards rushing. And Rucker is 5 for 9 aerially for 35 yards. And Bell will kick off from the north 35-yard line. The skyline of downtown Knoxville is just a few blocks away, site of the 1982 World's Fair. And the Tennessee River runs along the south end of the stadium, and literally hundreds of fans come to the Tennessee games in houseboats and large boats and so forth, and just walk uh, 50 or 100 yards from the river over here to the stadium. That's Woods fielding it, and falling in the end zone, it'll be a touchback. Got his feet tangled up. Bell's been talking to Umdenstock. That was a knuckleball. You think Umdenstock used some of his baseball training there? That was a knuckle. He might have. This Lobo football excitement on Channel 14 is brought to you in part by Ajax Mobile Homes. We trade for anything of value. No mother-in-laws, please. <laughs> what did you That's say? That's what it says here, Gary. <laughs> I'm just reading it. Defense to the test. They've had a rest. First down and 10 on the 20-yard line. Ah, hit screen. That's Clink Scales. Could go. Fasten your seat belts. But tripped up and down on the 41. I think it was Umdenstock who derailed him. Anthony Stevenson, and he hurt his shoulder. Anthony has to take on the blocker now. Watch 24 in the left-hand corner. 25, excuse me. There he has to take on the blocker. Now watch him reach out there. Yeah. But he hurt his shoulder doing it. Stevenson, number 25, corner man from Clovis. First and 10, Tennessee at its 40. Tennessee leads by three. They're in a slot out of the wide side of the field against the forefront defensively for the Lobos. And the handoff to Davis, and Davis gets one. 
And Undenstock gets the tackle. Undenstock made 10 tackles behind the line of scrimmage last year for the Lobos. And that was darn near behind the line of scrimmage. Consider that Undenstock came from outside the tackle to make that play, and it gives you an, an idea of his quickness. Second and a long nine for Tennessee. The clock becoming somewhat of a factor here. Five minutes to go in the first half. A little out route to Carter and the tackle by Stevenson after the first down inside Lobo territory at the 48-yard line. I want to tell you, Anthony Stevenson makes a great play here. There's no way he can get in front of that, but he is all alone. And watch him square up and great make the bulldog tackle. Great job. It's at the 48 and a half of the Lobos. The Lobo defense shifting now into a five front. And a completion is to Carter again on an underneath route. It's going to be hard to stop without what they're doing is they're taking advantage of Bob Umdenstock's rushes. If he's going to rush you, then he can't cover uh, flat passes and so that's why they're going out there in front of Anthony. Gary here's an interesting statistic in the first down department Tennessee 9 Lobos 7 almost the same as the score Tennessee 10 Lobos 7 second and four Tennessee and Lobo territory. That's Woods at the 38 nailed by Crum. Crum from Detroit a junior close to the first down. I they have to measure. I hope Tennessee doesn't know this, but Thomas Crum, number six, who makes this tackle, was a wide receiver this spring, and he has just learned this position in about a week and a half. So he is not very experienced there, but he makes a fine play. They are going to measure. Hope our spotters don't relay that information down to the Tennessee bench. I don't think they will. <laughs> First down for the Volunteers with 3.52 to go in the second quarter. Tennessee 10 and New Mexico 7. We want to invite you to stay tuned for our special halftime features we think you will enjoy as we are coming near the end of the second quarter and Tennessee leading New Mexico 10 to 7. So stay tuned for our halftime activities. From the 30. Caught by Stevenson, breaks away to the 20. And dropped on the 15 by Kirkendall. The problem is these blockers got out there in front of him. Now it's a running action fake this way, then come to the left, and there's see the blockers out in front. There's big number 68. Kirkendall can't quite get him. And Stevenson can't hang on, and it actually turned him upfield, kept him from going out of bounds until Kirkendall can make the tackle. First and 10 on the 15-yard line. Another look at the reception by Miller, the sophomore from Pasadena, California. Great speed, good hands. And it is fumbled by Howard, but he picks it up as though he were dribbling a basketball and gets some more yardage. And that's the way the ball bounces yes. to the nine-yard line. That that ball could still be bouncing in the other direction, but it hit for fortunately for Howard, it came back to his hands. Howard's living right. Second down four on the nine-yard line of the Lobos. 2.43 left on the clock in the second quarter. Lineman in. Very close, as you see. Flanker to the left, out of the eye. Flag on the play. Davis waltzing to the three. Two flags on the play. It'll be a first down if that play is allowed to stand. Tennessee fans are tense. The illegal procedure against Tennessee. Clock stopped at 2.24 to go in the second quarter. The Tennessee Volunteers with a record of 25 wins, eight losses, and three ties over the last three years. Having gone to the Citrus Bowl, the Sun Bowl, and the Sugar Bowl, where they defeated Miami handily New Year's night. 
And that really brought the Tennessee fans alive. A five yard penalty back to the Lobo 14. Dead ball foul, illegal procedure called on Tennessee. Penalties, Tennessee five for 20. New Mexico three for 20. Thank you, Ron Grants. Second down. Nine to go. Tennessee on the Lobo 14. 2.20 left in the half. Tennessee leads by three points. There goes Davis. And he's got it. And it's 16 to 7, Tennessee. And the bubble broke. Well, the Lobos shift their linebackers to the wide side of the field. And going back to the weak side of the formation, there is no linebacker. So if Danny Lahr, the safety, who just who couldn't come up fast enough to keep him from crossing the goal line, if they run that sprint draw, they're vulnerable. The Lobo defense is vulnerable. Nice Rich bit. will kick out of the hold of Lee England. 2.10 left. As the Lobos battle the clock in Tennessee. Kick is good. Tennessee 17, New Mexico 7. In the first half, WBA light heavyweight champ Marvin Johnson puts his title on the line against number one contender Jean-Marie Amiby. Catch all the action Saturday, September 20th, 9 o'clock on Channel 14. Right after the Lobo game at Texas Tech, Rich will kick off for Tennessee. Well, the Lobos are, I'm sure they're discouraged. That was their, their poorest defensive effort tonight on that drive. It was an 80-yard drive, nine plays for Tennessee. Here's Crum. At the 24. Down near the 28. Thomas looked like he was trying to run out the clock. Charles Davis made the tackle. Preseason all SEC pick. The big fellow on the Lobo sideline in the red shirt, red pants is Jacob Burney, the defensive line coach. Billy Rucker to the 35. Good game for Billy Rucker, and then Mike Kelly brings him down. If the Lobos stay with a wishbone on this drive with the time remaining, they're going to have to use a couple of their timeouts. That was a nice game for Billy, but it doesn't get the ball to the sidelines to stop the clock. 140 left in the first half. Tennessee 17, New Mexico 7. the intended receiver can't hold it on the 47 yard line Ooh, sometimes that happens he was floating wide open crossing the field that would have been a big big gainer but everybody drops them sometime third down two to go at the 35 Rucker pitches it away to Mathis. And Mathis takes it all the way to the Tennessee 34. Terry McDaniel on the tackle. Oh, that's a beautiful downfield lateral. You just can't say enough about number 12, Billy Rucker, how he reads. He knows where his pitch man is. He knows when he's about to get tackled. That's a long pitch. Oh, Rucker... Rucker I'm not, strength say, I'm not saying anything mind. negative against Francis, but I bet 93,000 fans here would sort of like to see Billy Rucker wearing orange. Tonight. They would. Uh, deflected by 44, Kelly. It's easy for us to see up here, but 
but Kenneth Whitehead was streaking down the far sideline wide open, but Billy couldn't, either he couldn't hold up enough to plan himself to throw it that far, or he didn't see him. 102 to go in the first half. And the ball is on the Tennessee 34, second down and 10. For the Lobos. It's a strange time to call a timeout on an incompletion. Second down, 10 yards to go on the 34, and really a little closer to the 33. Rogers in long motion. In the draw. Burgess. Not quite back to the line of scrimmage before he is contained by Kelly and Scott. 217 and 275. Timeout Lobos. 52 seconds left on the second quarter clock. 17-7, Tennessee in front. Now you have to use the timeout because the clock is running. But the Tennessee linebackers have too much savvy. They weren't going to let somebody break break free in there on that play because uh, they're in they're in uh, another first down would put Lobos in field goal range. Tennessee, the defending Sugar Bowl champions. They want to go to a bowl again. Tennessee ranks fourth nationally behind Alabama, Texas, and Southern Cal in all-time bowl appearances. Tennessee's been to 27 bowls. Alabama 38, Texas 32, and USC 29. Tennessee 13 and 14 in postseason activity. After their victory over Miami in the 1986 Sugar Bowl. We saw there uh, Billy Rucker talking to Paul Bates, an assistant coach. Paul is, uh, as we see Johnny Majors on the other side, but Paul is on the headphones up here in the press box to Ben Griffith. That's how the line of communications goes to make these decision calls. Third down 11 for the Lobos in the final minute of the first half. Billy Rucker traipses to the 27, and it's going to be fourth down. And now a decision for the Lobos. Do you go for the field goal? Do you go for the first down? They're down by 10 at the 28-yard line of Tennessee. It is fourth and four, and a half a minute left in the first half, and the clock rolling. Well, I think one of the things you have to consider here is, is it close enough to be within Billy Bell's range, accurate range? And evidently it isn't because it looks to me like they're going to go for it on fourth down. I think they're letting the clock run down and then call the timeout and we'll bring Bell in. Bell has a tee. It's right on the sideline. And I believe they were just letting the clock run as long as they could and then try to call a timeout okay. without getting the penalty. Now here comes the kicking and team. And then try for the field goal, and yep. it'll be about a 49, let's see, uh, it's 28, 35, about a 45-yard effort. Bill's leg is strong enough to get it there. The question is your accuracy from that distance. Then, of course, there could be a fake, too. Brent Kelly, number 13, is the holder. The ball on the 34-yard line at the near hash. It'll be a 44-yard try. The wind is really not a factor. Just a very slight breeze, just a zephyr. If Billy hits this, this will be a tremendous emotional lift for the Lobos to end the half. 13 seconds left in the half. And the Lobos field goal effort. above the equator and it is the clock is rolling down to six and Tennessee stops it there six seconds left and so Tennessee will have one play leading by ten points here in the second quarter time for your prevent defense Lobos can be uh, pleased though that they move the ball down the field in that two minute situation I know they came up short but uh, the Lobos have, have fought hard and played them uh, played them fairly even in this first half. Be sure to stay tuned for our halftime show, and we're going to show you some of the pride of the Southland Band, the University of Tennessee Band, 300 members strong. Okay. 
Tennessee at the line of scrimmage, and they're just going to let uh, the clock run out. They're just going to let the clock run out. Oh, there is a flag, though. See if the flag was thrown after time expired. They're calling the teams back. Fox shows no time remaining in the second half, but there is a flag at the 31-yard line. And referee Gene Wirtz now talking with Fred Mady of the Lobos. Fred says we decline. Mike Kirkendall is using a little Illegal sign language. Motion. And a penalty is refused, and so the first half is over. The first half ends, but the Lobos have put up a staunch effort against the Tennessee Volunteers. And the score at halftime is Tennessee 17, the University of New Mexico 7. Stay tuned for our halftime features. We'll be back shortly. To Knoxville, Tennessee, where the score is Tennessee 17, New Mexico 7. Tonight, during our halftime festivities, as we're watching the Tennessee band here for just a moment, the Pride of the Southland band, 300 members strong. Uh, we are going to take you back to Albuquerque for a special halftime feature, a little bit of behind-the-scenes stuff. And now, here with that story is Paul Preventer. This WTV in Albuquerque, bringing you the Tennessee-New Mexico football game at halftime. Tennessee leading the Lobos 17-7. to And the band performing here at Neyland Stadium on the campus of the University of Tennessee. This is Connie Alexander greeting you from the press box high atop Neyland Stadium. And we are delighted to have with us tonight a gentleman that I have admired for many, many years. Trying to get him to come to us here, Lindsay. I'm not sure about our communications. Oh, they tell us we are on camera. I am delighted to have with me one of the giants of the television industry, Lindsay Nelson, one of the great sports announcers of all times, recently retired. He lives here in Knoxville. He's now an adjunct professor uh, on the faculty at the University of Tennessee. Lindsay, I'm like a kid on Christmas morning having you on the air. I have admired you for 35 years, and just great to have you here. Connie, it's great to see you. As a matter of fact, you and I go back a little ways. We've done some things together over the years, and it's good to see you. Well, we've had a lot of cotton bowls we worked together. Well, we sure have. I did 26 cotton bowls, and uh, ran to you frequently there, and then I saw you around the country at other places. Well, it's great to see you. Uh, you are totally retired now, is that right? I'm as retired as you can possibly get. I don't do any broadcasting at all, and I'm an adjunct professor uh, of broadcasting at the Communications College, and uh, uh, I, I do that because I don't know exactly what it means, but it sounds so good. Adjunct professor. <laughs> you, were, you were saying General Westmoreland was complimenting you on that. You knew Ernie Pyle, who was famous in Albuquerque as well as all around the world. Absolutely. Ernie Pyle and I became great friends during World War II. We kept up our correspondence after he came home, and after he had been home the first time and had been to Albuquerque, had come back, and he used to tell me about the fact that he had chosen Albuquerque as his home out of all the places that he'd been, that's where he wanted to settle down. That was his choice. Lindsay, you're telling me that uh, you started your career right here as a spotter for Bill Stern. You went on to broadcast for all the networks, greatest events in the world, uh, broadcast for the Mets, the San Francisco Giants. What was the greatest event you ever covered? I suppose, Connie, the greatest event was the fifth and final game of the 1969 World Series simply because the Mets for seven years had been just horrible. It had been terrible, seven years of famine, and we looked up and they're winning the championship of the world. It was so exciting because we would paid our price. We'd, we'd, we'd been there all that time, and now we could just lay back and enjoy what they were doing. And you started your career right here in this stadium as a spotter for Bill Stern. When was that? That was 1939. Bill Stern, of course, was NBC. And this was radio because television had not yet been invented. And Bill Stern would come in here for the big games. And then he took me that year at the end of the season to the Rose Bowl. And I was his spotter in the Rose Bowl. And then uh, I went on into the Army when World War II came. And I came back here and started broadcasting Tennessee games in 1948. 
and then I went from here to the Liberty Broadcasting System, from there to NBC, and on and on. I remember when you were on the Liberty Broadcasting System. And you live uh, right across the river, I understand, on the, on the bluff over there. It's right there, kind of five minutes away. I can get to any place around here in just five minutes. I can get to the airport in ten minutes. It's very convenient. Now, Lindsay, you commented before the game that this is kind of a difficult night for you. This is the first time you've been to a game where you haven't been working in, what, 40, 45 years? That's right. I did play by play for 40 years, and this is the first time I've just come to the game as a spectator, and it's sort of hard to do. You know, I don't know what a spectator does, and uh, uh, I don't say anything. My father sitting next to me down in the press box said, you never say anything. I said, well, for 40 years I spoke when I was supposed to speak, and I'm not supposed to speak nice, so I don't say anything. Lindsey Nelson, one of the all-time greats. He's a member of uh, the Hall of Fame. Many times has been chosen as National Sportscaster of the Year. Lindsey, uh, how do you feel about this football game that's going on tonight and the way the New Mexico's performing? You know, it's been outstanding. It's been an action football game, and I thought the Lobos in the second quarter had an offense rolling. I thought they were outstanding. They must be excited about that, I should think. Say, we were talking while we were waiting for the interview. You were at that 1954 Cotton Bowl game when Tommy Lewis of Alabama came off the bench to make the tackle. You want to tell us about that? New Year's Day, 1954, Alabama and Rice, and uh, uh, Tommy Lewis came off the bench to tackle Dickie Maywell. I was doing the game with Red Grange. It was one of the most exciting things that ever happened in the football game. What, uh, you know, a quick summary, we've got about half a minute. You want to make any comment about uh, how sports have progressed in your career? Well, of course, from the time that I started out doing a radio broadcast until now, the, the broadcasting end of it has moved in and become a dominant factor because the money that uh, is generated by television and that sort of thing has had the greatest effect on sports. Lindsey Nelson, a great sportscaster, a gracious gentleman. Lindsey, thank you so much for coming and being on for the New Mexico audience tonight. Honey, thank you. Best wishes to you. Thank you. We'll be back in a moment. Back in Tennessee <clears throat> at uh, halftime, Tennessee leads the Lobos 17 to 7. And we're going to bring you some of the halftime statistics. Let's take a quick look at the total offense here, Gary. Uh, Tennessee, 236 yards, very productive first half. The Lobos, 151 yards total offense, and that's really nothing to be ashamed of. That's well, on a 300-yard-a-game pace. No, it's nothing to be ashamed of. And if you add that 47 yards that uh, was called back on that run by Glenn Rogers off the option pitch, that would balance it up pretty even, you see. And plus, add that seven points, which New Mexico lost. But uh, well, yeah, let's, things... a, let's look at the ball control here. Tennessee had it a total of 37 plays. Let's check, let's check that. Uh, 22 rushes for Tennessee for 124 yards and passing that looks like 12 for 18. 18 is that what I you, what you read at? Yeah. Okay, so Tennessee added 40 plays and the Lobos had it 35 plays. Lobos 24 rushes for 115 and in the passing department Lobos 5 for 11. Tennessee was 12 for 18 in the passing category. The, time, the possession time, I think, is an important one, too, because Tennessee, who had who dominated the first quarter, now it looks pretty even. Tennessee had a total possession of 16 minutes, 33 seconds, to New Mexico's 13 minutes, 27 seconds. The Tennessee leads in the scoreboard, 17 to 7, and first downs, 13 to 7. Penalties, four against Tennessee, three against the Lobos, 20 yards each. Uh, punting game, Tennessee averages 44 and a half, the Lobos 47 yards. Ronnie Keller had a good day because, and it's good to see him have a good day because as a freshman, as a, as a neophyte in this stadium, he had a bad day in 83. Burgess rushed for 43, Davis for 85. Rucker hit 5 for 11 for 36. Francis 12 for 18, 118. The team's coming back out. We'll be back with the second half in a minute as Tennessee leads by 10. Back live from Tennessee, this is Connie Alexander with Gary Ness as we await the kickoff for the second half. I want to take another opportunity to thank our spotters, Bill Spiller, Bobby Gratz, and our statistician, Ron Gratz, who are doing a great job. They're all Tennessee folks. And uh, Bobby Gratz is spotting the Lobos. He played for Tennessee back in the mid-60s. 
Long about the time Gary Ness was playing for the Lobos. Well, I think he was starting about the time I was finishing. But uh, but he looks uh, he looks younger than me, I guess. You both yeah. still look pretty good shape. <laughs> Gary, you played at uh, what was it, 195? Yeah, I'd start the season at uh, 5'10", 195, and I'd finish at 5'7", 170. <laughs> <laughs> he used that line last year. Yes. It's a good one, though. <laughs> Those are the days of the fullback was a blocking back in the backfield, uh, was a guard in the backfield. Lobo's getting their final instructions. Here in Tennessee, they're just going to tie a knot in uh, the end of the rope and hang on. Well, the Lobo defense will be on the field first in and uh, they need to assert themselves. I know they would they regret that last touchdown drive that Tennessee had after the offense had maintained ball possession and given them a good rest. Let them come back like that. OK, ready to go as the Lobos will be kicking off. Ninety three thousand and nobody's Bell left to boot. And ten thousand people outside trying to get tickets to get into this game. That's an official report. 10,000 people outside trying to get in to see this football game. 93,000 inside the stadium. The kick to Woods. Ooh, that was a boot by Bell, 70 yards. Woods to the 15. 30. In, down in a melange of muscle at the 33. Melange of muscle? Well, what happened was the Lobos did not get downfield fast enough. Look how deep he takes us in the end zone, at least five yards, and then gets the chance to run it out before the first time he's touched is at least the 30. That's the old story of outkicking the coverage. Of course, uh, that's you always outkick the coverage on the kickoff, but uh, it's sort of like what happens on a punt when you outkick the coverage. Francis looking for clink scales, incomplete, too tall. Miller and Robinson, linebackers for University of Tennessee, out with injuries. And we saw a basic change defensively. Bob Umdenstock, instead of rushing, dropped off, and he is the reason that pass went awry because he was in the flight of that short completion. On the 33 of Tennessee, they own the ball first and 10. Clink scales. Good pass from Francis. Dropped on the 46 by Crum. They're still working to the wideouts. Clink scale, a great athlete out of a local high school here. Now he runs the short post, whereas he's been previously running out patterns. That's Davis to his 49. Davis in the first half had 85 yards on 10 carries and he scored two touchdowns. Comes off limping a bit. Burgess 10 carries for 43 yards and one touchdown for the Lobos. Just inside the 49 of Tennessee, second down and a long six. And the sprint draw to Panuska at tailback who replaced Keith Davis. Panuska rushed for 182 last year. He plays fullback or tailback. A ball on a 46-yard line where Sells made a hit for New Mexico. And it's third and one for Tennessee. Here is another big situation right here. And close to the first down is Miller on the third down try. Looks like he made it. They've been very effective, Tennessee has, with their traps in the middle. First down for Tennessee on the Lobo 44, where Cole and Bradford made the tackle. Cole from Chattanooga, just a short way down the road, and Bradford from Atlanta. First and 10, Lobo 44-yard line. Five-step drop for Francis, hit by Mady. Ball jarred loose, and it's ruled an incomplete pass. They rule that the arm had started forward. 
Fred breaks. Now watch Fred work around the center. See the center blocking on him there? Reached around, threw the man down, and wham. Oh, that, he made his presence known to uh, Mr. Francis then. The arm had started forward, and they rule incomplete pass. Second and 10 on the 44-yard line of the Lobos, and Tennessee calls a timeout as Francis is over at the near sideline. And we're going to take a quick break here with Tennessee leading by 10 points. Back in Tennessee, quick recap of the scoring in the first half. Burgess scored for New Mexico's touchdown on a two-yard run. Davis scored on a 46-yard run early in the game and a 14-yard run later, and Rich kicked a field goal for Tennessee. And that's the way the scoreboard got to 17-7. to Francis has good protection. Now he's being bothered by Sells and out of bounds near the line of scrimmage. The great thing about Joe Sells is that he has great speed. He was a, started out as a running back, was used sparingly last year as a tight end in, in a position which was abandoned virtually in the, in the run and shoot offense. And now he's at linebacker. And he forces that play to go to what? It's on the 47, third down and 13 for Tennessee. First out of the pocket. Complete on the 44 to Panuska. Down to the 40, but not enough for the first down. It'll be fourth down coming. Boy, those Lobos were coming after him. They sure were. And watch. <coughs> Now, he sees pressure. Now he's going to turn outside. Now, Philip Vaughn got turned in. He's the contained man. But here comes Kelvin Johnson. And here is a nice catch by Panuska, who, although he's stocky, although he's short, he is hard to bring down. Stevenson, 25, got help from Lara, 28. Fourth down, and Tennessee's going to punt as Garman stands near midfield. Mathis back on the 10. Garmin trying a little uh, pooch kick, and it hits near the sideline at the 13, and they're going to rule it out of bounds, I believe, near the 13 or 14-yard line. Very, landed very close to that sideline, just barely got a piece of it on the 14, and out of bounds, and the Lobos will take over at their own 14-yard line. Facing a Tennessee team that has 47 lettermen back from a Sugar Bowl championship. 23 on offense and 24 on defense. 25-yard kick. Rucker brings him up to the line of scrimmage. Rucker out to the 21 or 22-yard line where Terry Brown hauls him down. The wishbone has been succeeding against the Tennessee defense. Why change it? Watch the linebacker collapse on, on uh, Burgess. Rucker reads it well, turns up the middle, and makes a nice seven-yard gain for his uh, team there. Brings up second and three, the, the situation you want. Rodgers had five carries for 29 for the Lobos in the first half. Second and three. 17-7 Tennessee. Four minutes gone in the third quarter. Here's the outside option. And Rucker reads beautifully and pitches it away. Oh, and down to the Tennessee 42-yard line is Rodgers. Oh, that Rucker. Well, what, what would you like to use? Magician? I'd say magician. Now, the fans don't like this because they think it's a forward lateral. Let's watch. Let's watch. Takes one man out. It might be. Could have been it a ball. Might have been. It might have. He had the first down even before he pitched it. It's on the Tennessee 42 and a half. First and 10. Wishbone formation for the Lobos. And Rucker in trouble. Rucker swarmed by volunteers. Darren Miller and Charles Davis made the primary hits. 
at the Tennessee 40-yard line. It wasn't there. He did the right thing. He did the right thing. He knew he couldn't. He didn't dare pitch it because the cornerback was up in the face of the pitch man. So he just ate it. Second down. Not Eight to go. Not literally, of course. Both ends split in a wishbone configuration. Burgess penetrates for six. Brian Hunt, the nose guard at 259, makes the tackle on Burgess. Burgess, 187.59. Caught 37 passes last year for 623. I don't think they've passed to him tonight so far. Well, you won't see many passes to him when he's the, the fullback. Mathis caught five for 36. Clink scales five for 48 in the first half. Third down. A yard to go. Burgess has it to the 31-yard line. In the arms of Keith DeLong, the 220-pound sophomore linebacker from Lawrence, Kansas. First down for the Lobos, just inside Tennessee's 31. The Lobos moving with nine and a half to go in the third period. The nice thing about the wishbone is your linemen get to charge ahead. And if the defender's bigger than you are, that's better than waiting on him and by pass blocking. The linemen get to charge ahead. It does offset some physical advantage because you can read the plays and not have to block everybody. And here is about a two-yard gain for Burgess before Dale Jones makes the hit on him. Dale Jones, All-SEC, third-team All-American. He's a preseason All-American this year. A player with tremendous desire next to the youngest in a family of 13 children. They call him the hitman, number 54 for Tennessee. Second and eight, Lobos on the Tennessee 29-yard line. Billy Rucker making sure everybody's got the word. And Billy fakes inside, keeps around the corner. Billy Rucker to the 18-yard line for a first down for the Lobos. And the Lobos are on the move, trailing by 10 and they have a march going against Tennessee. I don't think Air Force Academy runs the wishbone any better, their quarterbacks any better than number 12, Billy Rucker. He is masterful. It's on the 18-yard line of the Volunteers. And a pitch to Rodgers. And Rodgers tight ropes it down to the 12-yard line of Tennessee. And Dale Jones was there. Dale Jones, the undisputed leader of the Tennessee team, made the tackle. Dale Jones, who comes up with the big plays. It looks like he may have to come up with some big ones here now as the Lobos are pushing the vaunted Tennessee team back into the shadow of their own goalposts. They're giving us a clinic in the wishbone offense. New Mexico 30 rushes for 186 tonight, averaging six yards per play on the ground. Burgess into the center of the meat grinder to the nine-yard line, and Dale Jones rises to the defensive occasion once more on the nine. It's about a yard away from a first down. Official attendance, 93,875. It's on the nine-and-a-half-yard line. The line to gain just inside the eight, so it's a short two yards to go with third down coming. You must be able to be willing to pitch the ball if you're going to run the wishbone on the goal line. Let's see if Billy can do it. Burgess, did he lose the ball? He is inside the nine-yard line. That was the third down try. And they've got it just inside the nine, and the line again is just inside the eight. It is fourth down, and one yard to go for New Mexico. Whitehead splits wide to the left. Arbonne splits wide to the right. It's a wishbone. A 6-5 goal line defense for Tennessee. Here's the fourth down. Pitch to Rodgers around the corner. He's got it. He's going. He's out on the two-yard line of Tennessee. First down for New Mexico. You have to be willing to pitch the ball, and he did. They had a stunt coming on the left of the screen. There he is for Billy. He got the ball away. Nice bit of running here by number 24, Glenn Rogers. 
And a hit made by Miller, number 45, to save the day for Tennessee on the two. It's first down and goal to go for the Lobos. First and goal for the Lobos. Burgess, touchdown! Kevin Burgess with his second touchdown. No flags. Burgess for the touchdown, his second score of the night. As he hammers from the fullback position in the wishbone formation. Watch the get off on the line of scrimmage and watch the strong leg drive of number 33 Kevin Burgess and how can 93,000 be so quiet. Burgess 16 carries for 61 yards. Bill going to try the PAT. Brent Kelly to hold. Seven minutes left in the third quarter. Here's the kick. It's up. It's Good and the score 17 to 10, 14 to 10. <laughs> Back in Tennessee, Connie Alexander with Gary Ness and the Lobos have moved within three of Tennessee. Tennessee 17, New Mexico 14, midway in the third quarter here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Gary, how about a quick analysis of the change in tides in this game. I don't think New Mexico came into this game expecting to run the wishbone so much. They, they normally use it in their short yardage and goal line. But Tennessee's defense was so outside conscious and so uh, conscious of the receivers downfield that it was apparent that they, and they were playing a soft line of scrimmage. So take advantage of it. Use those linemen to blow ahead, open holes, you got a quarterback that reads your options well and pitch men that keep their relationships. So that's the answer. You know, the run and shoot is an offense that is designed to spread the defense, uh, divide yes. and conquer. Yes. So Bell ready to kick off from the 35. A new rule this year, college kicks from the 35. Bell launches it. That's Woods. 15. 30. Out of bounds at the 30 and a half. Isn't, Mike Kirkendall on the tack. Isn't he exciting? That Woods, when he sees a seam, he just races through it. What speed? Gary, how about this? The Lobos marched 86 yards on the touchdown drive in 12 plays. That's an average of seven yards a carry. They took it at their 14 and just hammered and hunted and pecked and chopped out field and they have come within three points 17 to 14 and Tennessee has its work cut out for it right here and the pass to Miller to the 35 to the 37 uh, 23 up there is Kirkendall the Lobos are rallying to the ball better on their they're wary of this uh, short screen out here and they're following the lead blockers there's better pursuit so you watch all the white shirts converge here. Stevenson, Kirkendall, 47, um, Torrey Edwards. He almost lost it, didn't he? Well, you commented a minute ago about how 93,800 people could be so quiet. Francis back to pass. Five-step drop. Reads the coverage. He's got Cleveland right open on the level 37. Out on the 31. Oh, Cleveland was in the isolation booth out there. He sure was. There has to be a breakdown in coverage here. I don't think we'll, we'll pan wide enough to see the secondary response. But he also has a lot of time. Danny Douglas is on the ground there. And Carter Stevenson was actually downfield with another receiver, and he retreated up to get the, to get the uh, tackle. Terrence Cleveland, a 5'9", 154-pound freshman, Built a lot like uh, Mathis. Clink scales. Cannot make the shoestring catch on the 20. Coverage by Anthony Stevenson, the junior from Clovis. And the orange and white of Tennessee. Tennessee takes its orange colors from the orange daisies that used to grow in profusion here on the hill on the campus of Tennessee. Francis looks. Got his man on the 19. First down. That's Clink Scales. Stevenson stopped him. Well, their game plan here is to throw the ball weak because 
the, the receiver on the weak side is isolated. Now he's been running out patterns. Now he runs an in pattern. You see Stevenson, who's been playing on the sideline, running with him to the middle. It's man-to-man -man coverage. Pro set for Tennessee. First down on the Lobo 18-yard line. Five and a half to go in the third period. Looking for uh, Carter. They will keep going to an isolated receiver one-on-one -on -one like Carter or Cleveland. And poor Anthony Stevenson has a lonesome job out there, but I think he's been doing a good job. This sophomore quarterback for Tennessee has hit 64% tonight, 16 for 25 for 171. Tennessee's uh, Woods has had two kickoff returns for 68. Slot eye to the left. There goes Paniska to the 14. It'll be second and five. A Tennessean shaken up down on the six, getting up slowly. And I think it's Cleveland. Yes, it is number four. And he's going to run off the field and will be replaced in there by Kennard McGuire, a transfer from UTEP where he was a freshman starter. Kelvin Johnson made the stop on Panuska. Panuska is a senior from Brick, New Jersey. Third and five. Complete. To Carter. Now they ruled incomplete. I think he smothered it. Oh, the way the Lobos are lining up defensively, if they run that off tackle to the weak side, to the top of the screen there, the Lobos are vulnerable. Uh, he dropped it, and it's fourth and five. And a field goal try coming up by Tennessee as Rich will kick from the far hash, just inside the far hash mark at the 20. It'll be a 30-yard effort. There is no wind. 441 left third quarter. Field goal tries on the way. Up. It is good. Tennessee leads. Back in Tennessee, Connie Alexander with Gary Ness. Don't forget next week we'll be covering the Lobo BYU game in Provo at 12 noon on Channel 14. And then the following Saturday night we'll be in Lubbock, Texas to cover the Lobos against Texas Tech live. Tonight we greet you from Tennessee, from the Smoky Mountains, from the banks of the Tennessee River, just beside downtown Knoxville, a city of some 200,000 on a campus of 25,000 students, the same size as the University of New Mexico. Phil Rich, number 94, will be the kickoff man. Kicks one of those dying ducks out of bounds at the six-yard line of the Lobos. Uh, it'll be a re-kick. Tennessee offensively rushing 133 yards on 26 carries. That's an average of five. And passing for 193 yards, 17 for 28. So they've averaged a little over 11 yards per uh, completed pass. This uh, penalty here may give the Lobos some good field position. Now they're kicking from the 30. And uh, this should afford uh, Thomas Crum a run back. Boy, this Ron Gratz is passing the statistics. He's a personal computer over He's here. fast, isn't he? He really is. These, these Tennessee guys are quick. New Mexico team, 30 carries for 196 yards. And 11 passes... Attempted five, completed for 36, and that's an interesting story. Those passes came early in the game. That's right. And so it, the Lobo total offense tonight is 232 up to this point. And it will stay on the ground as long as, as uh, Tennessee stays with the same defense. And Tennessee's total offense is 330 up to this point. 330 to 232. There's Crum on the line. 25. To the 30-yard line. And he was jaw-to-jaw -jaw with Brian Kimbrough, a 210-pound sophomore from Dixon, Tennessee. Tennessee has a lot of out-of-state players. That's kind of interesting. Let's see. They have uh, Alabama, Texas, Virginia, California, Ohio. Kansas, New Jersey, Florida, Michigan, Maryland, 
Ohio. Wishbone. And Rucker runs it. Rucker breaks. Rucker to the 40. Rucker to the 48 yard line. More ledger to Maine by Billy Rucker. You mentioned after their last touchdown drive what they've done offensively. They have doubled Miami Florida's output against them against the same defense in the uh, Sugar Bowl last year. And he got to give credit to this number 12. Isn't he something? Now watch him. He knows he's gone, gone as far as he can go. Cover the ball. On the Lobo 48, first and 10, score 20 to 14, Tennessee. After the Tennessee 30-yard field goal, Rodgers in trouble. Rodgers cannot get around Davis. Charles Davis. Davis set up a roadblock, and Rodgers could not go. And got back just about to the line of scrimmage. Rodgers looks good tonight. 174-pound, 5'7", senior out of Phoenix. And, and don't forget that 47-yard touchdown run he took on that pitch, and which was called back. Or he'd look even better. It's second and 10. Lobo's up there, 48. Broken wishbone. Tennessee with sort of a split look. And a four. Uh oh interception at midfield. Back to the 30. That's Davis to the 10. He's got it all. Flag, maybe? Let's see. No flags. That is that is unfortunate. They broke the wishbone. It's the first play in this, since the first quarter they've been out of the wishbone. That they It was set up if it would have been hung on to. That Davis is a fine player. He is their outstanding defender. Charles Davis, who is a postgraduate, had a year of eligibility left, already has his degree. And so it's 26 to 14. And maybe they're going to go for two. Let's take another look at the interception. Right off the fingertips of Mathis. Right off, well, and actually it was off the fingertips of Rogers, then Mathis, and then into Davis's hands. And there, there's really no one left. I mean, it's... He can walk in if he wants. It's a bad break. Timeout here on the field. And Tennessee is apparently going to go for two points, Gary, to try to make it 28 to 14 instead of 27 to 14. Tennessee had their previous points on two touchdowns, two field goals. Charles Davis with a 55-yard return on that interception. Counter punched it in. And referee Gene Wirtz talking with uh, one of those Tennessee troops up there. Daryl Smith, the 272-pound offensive left tackle, number 57. As Jeff Francis in the conference on the sideline, Johnny Majors in the brown support coat. Johnny Majors, who was an All-America tailback here at Tennessee. I was a tailback. Every time I got off the bench, coach said, you get your tail back. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> All right, let's see what they'll go with here. I think uh, they've been working the wideouts. They've also used the uh, sprint draw effectively in the first half. Let's see what they go with here. Big down for New Mexico's defense. 3-10 to go. Third quarter. One for two on a conversion attempt. Francis runs it in. And it's 28 to 14, Tennessee. Well, that was the old run pass option of Mussolini. The two-part special can be seen this Wednesday and Thursday at 7 p.m. on KGSW-TV, Channel 14 in Albuquerque. Rich ready to kick off once more. Crum back on the Lobo five. So the Lobo's only pass of the second half resulted in an interception and a Tennessee touchdown. Crum out across the 20, but no more as Mike Kelly brings him down at the 22. 
At the end of this game, we'll look back at this point and say, well, do the Lobos check it in here or do they still fight back to get in this game? There's a quarter. There's 18 minutes left in the ball game. Two touchdowns uh, down, and this is a this is the character building part of the ball game right here. They were down 10 nothing earlier in the game. They were down 17-7, brought it back to 17-14. This is where the depth is going to start playing a role. Billy Rucker out near the 27. Boy, Billy manages to get five yards before the inside linebackers, Miller and DeLong, make the stop on him. DeLong is the son of Steve DeLong, Tennessee All-American. He was a winner of the Outland Trophy for the best lineman in the nation in 64. That name warms the hearts of Tennessee fans. Rucker 14 rushes for 87 yards tonight. Average of a little over six. Fakes to the fullback. Made the mesh, then the disconnect, and the keep to the 36 for a first down. Read it perfectly. Watch the, the tackles close down on, the, uh, on Burgess. Billy gets his five, seven yards, whatever the defense allows him. 35-yard line of the Lobos. First and 10 with 2.14 left in the third quarter. The crowd trying to start the wave going. Rucker, a broken play, but Rucker makes two or three yards out of it. Turns uh, yeah, lemons I, into lemonade. I don't think it was broken, but I think that, that on his... His the uh, the right here. The back gets pushed back into him. You see. So now he's going to keep the ball. He can't run out he, without giving too much ground. So he does the smart thing and goes straight ahead. He got two. It'll be second and eight. Lobo 37. Arbon makes his first catch for the Lobos at midfield. First down. Keith Arbon. Transfer from UT Arlington, which uh, eliminated football. Arbon also played a flag. Arbon also played at BYU. Oh, a flag is going to eradicate the Lobo game. Rucker, 16 carries for 97 yards. And now a penalty against the Lobos of five. Illegal use of the hands. Well, that, that interception run back by Davis has ignited this crowd again, so the Lobos have to, if Billy will probably have to do his signals by signs again rather than verbally. Rucker dropped on the 24. It's going to be third and 21. Mark Hovannik made the tackle. Fourth generation Czechoslovakian from Yorktown, Virginia, 255. Fourth generation of his family in America. All right, now Billy Rucker is the up back here, and this is third down. Watch for some sort of fake. It's a punt formation for the Lobos on third and 21. Good observation by Gary. And they pass it up to Whitehead at the 37, but it's shy of the first down. I believe that's Whitehead's first reception tonight. I do, I do too. Dale Jones brought him down. So the Lobos didn't get the first down, but they got a good chunk of the 21 yards needed for it, about 13 to be exact. And it'll be fourth and about eight at their 37. Ron Keller back in once more to boot. Flags are just hanging from the poles around the top, the rim of this stadium. Nice boot by Keller. Kramer has it on his 28 and gets to his 31. Andre Kramer, number one popular with the crowd here. This is his third year as a starter. He's a quarterback in high school at 4,500 yards total offense in two years. 
and was a high school player of the year in Baltimore. You know, another thing. We'll We're going to take back. a quick break here for the end of the third quarter. Tennessee leads by 14. All right, back at Neyland Stadium on the campus of the University of Tennessee. First and 10 for Tennessee at their 30-yard line. Following the punt from Keller for 35 yards. Keller averaging 44.2 tonight. Francis. And Francis to the 32. The Tennessee Volunteers, the defending SEC champions, had only one loss last year, that one in a close one to Florida. The Volunteers don't have to play Florida or Georgia this year or next year. In fact, they never uh, play Florida or Georgia in the same year. They play, uh, for example, they play Florida two straight years, and then they don't play Florida for six. They play Georgia for two straight years, and then they don't play Georgia for six. So that makes uh, their uh, schedule a little easier, obviously. It's Florida and Georgia, two of the great powers. Anthony Stevenson, number 25 on coverage. It's going to be third down and about eight. Intended receiver was Thomas Woods. You know, I'll bet Anthony would like to see that again. If he would have been playing the ball a little bit more, he might have had the interception. And I want to point out, Connie, Tennessee has not made an offensive mistake. Their only fumble bounced back up in their hands, and they don't have an interception yet. And something like that could bring New Mexico back in the game if it happens. 14-14 to go, fourth, fourth. 28-14 score, Tennessee, third and eight. The bomb. Oh, a great catch by Anthony Miller, a junior college All-America transfer. Oh, oh. Remembrances of Willie Mays in 1954. This is a great catch because he had to, he's looking over his left shoulder and he'll end up looking over his right shoulder to get the ball right there. Oh my. And just inbounds. It was a great throw too. Great throw and a great catch. Good coverage by our crew here in Tennessee. It's on the Lobo 32. First and 10. Eye to the left. Howard, two or three. Joe Sells on the tackle, 218-pound senior linebacker from Phoenix. Former running back and tight end. Put it on the 32. Call it second and about nine. Just uh, between the 31 and the 32. like a crazy option and there's Panuska and Panuska struggles gets two extra yards to the 27. We have a spectacular vantage point here. We're seated high atop the 40 yard line the south 40 on the west side of the field and say we're about 10 or 12 stories above the playing field and it's an excellent view and it's a gorgeous night here temperature somewhere near 70. Just a slight breeze, rippling old glory. It's on the 27th, third and about five. Woods has the first down and more outside the 15-yard line, where Stevenson wraps him up. They have just, they've just been sharp. Tennessee offense has not been spectacular, but they have been sharp. They just don't beat themselves. They don't give you anything. Good protection there for Francis. Nice pass. Good coverage. Okay, it's first down. And the Lobos are calling a timeout. Crum was signaling for a timeout. I think the Lobos might have had 12 players on the field. We're going to take a quick break. Early in the fourth quarter, Tennessee up by 14. Back in Tennessee, 12.33 to go in the game. The ball on the Lobo 16, first and 10 for Tennessee. Lobos called a timeout. Volunteers finished number four in the national polls last year. A pre-1985 study ranked Tennessee's schedule last year as the fifth toughest in the nation. 
The schedule doesn't look all that tough this year. In fact, looks like maybe Auburn and Alabama will be their only really stiff test. The carry is by Paduska. Paduska carry. Paduska is a tough runner. He is hard to bring down. He doesn't appear to be fast, but he has great balance and uh, good leg drive. He's the kid who had a 100-yard kickoff return in the Sun Bowl. Paduska, 184-pound senior. The Lobos would like to not only shut him off from a uh, touchdown, but also like to uh, keep him from kicking a field goal. That would mean they'd have to score three times to catch them. Second and nine at the Lobo 15. Tennessee leads 28-14. A dozen minutes to go. Panuska to the nine-yard line. And it's going to be third and about three, where Kelvin Johnson, a senior from Dallas, made the tackle for the Lobos. The Lobos will return to Albuquerque tomorrow night at 8.29. A Lobo shaken up. And Todine coming out on the field to give assistance. Lobos will return to Albuquerque tomorrow night at 8.29 p.m. on United Airlines. You might give, uh, or Panuska would be happy to give Miller some credit, the lead back through on that play who knocked out the linebacker. Kelvin Johnson is the Lobo shaken up. And uh, that's who it was, I believe. Really a great block by the, the lead back, the fullback coming through on the play. It's on the nine-yard line. It'll be third down and three to go for Tennessee. They've got Johnson on his feet. 6'1", 207-pounder. And into the game to replace him comes the guy who really wants to play, Donnie Gassaway. Donnie Gassaway's first appearance tonight. Watch him, number 46. He is a fine linebacker, had a good year last year. One of the leading tacklers on the team. Had arth arthroscopic surgery on his knee just 15 days ago. Split six front for the Lobos. Pitch. Touchdown, Howard. 34 to 14. Tennessee. Miller out in front. Howard, the big back, has just replaced Panuska. This shows their depth. And he steps through some tackles. There is a nice cutback. The uh, defensive pursuit was there, but he, he was allowed to cut back inside and make the touchdown. 11-17 left in the game as Tennessee tries to tack on the extra point. Rich has not missed tonight on field goals or extra point tries. He's still batting 1,000. It's Tennessee 35, Lobos 14. We'll return. All right, here in Tennessee, the fans now are starting to celebrate. Rocky Top. Rocky Top, Tennessee. If you, if you see again, here's the slow motion. Now, here comes Howard, 235 pounds, and Panuska ran the ball downfield on this drive, and now he comes in fresh, and he's going to run right into the wall here. High five with a fan. The fans are in this game. Well, they had to sort of sit on the edges of their seats for a they long sure time. Did. The for Lobos two periods. kept them tense. But now they're breathing more easily as they lead by 21 points. The odds makers gave Tennessee 23. Crum crash lands on his 23. He's had a busy night. Thomas Crum returning kickoffs, playing cornerback. Lobos need to get, get a quick touchdown here and get back in it. This Lobo football excitement on Channel 14 brought to you in part by Ajax Mobile Homes, where they say, we trade for anything of value. No mother-in-laws, please. Now the disadvantage of the wishbone is it's not a good come from behind or quick scoring offense. So they're out of the wishbone into their run and shoot. New Mexico 268 in total offense. Now they're going to the air and Rogers takes it out near a first down around the 32 of the Lobos. Dale Jones, Andre Kramer on the tackle. Lobos six, seven for 14 now passing for about 60 yards. They had one intercepted. Uh, 
Some fresh defenders in in the front three for Tennessee. Hobby 261, Whitehead 237, Anthony Howard 256. So Johnny Majors letting some of the second stringers see some action now as they enjoy the 21 point lead. And Terrence Mathis is the intended receiver. Billy did not want to have to run this far to throw the ball, but uh, he got flushed out a little bit. This is KGSW TV, Channel 14, Albuquerque. Third and about a foot to go for the Lobos outside their 32. Billy Rucker has rushed for almost 100 yards tonight on 16 carries. Billy Rucker, the senior from Gallup. He gets nailed, but Mathis gets the first down. Take a little, give a little. Yeah. If you're going to run the wishbone, you must pitch. Here comes Terrence. They only needed, they had a waist down there. They only needed uh, a yard or actually less than a yard, and they picked it up handily. Just inside the Lobo 34, 10-24 to play. Fox stopped in that out-of-bounds play. 10-01 here in Knoxville. Rucker gets the pass away, and Mathis dropped it. Mathis took his eyes off the ball as he had to wait a long time for Rucker to get time to pass. And then Mathis was feeling the pressure from behind, takes his eyes off the ball and drops it. Now he had run to the sidelines on his original pattern, saw Billy was being corralled, came back inside. Pass was there, but as you say, uh, you got to catch it first. I don't think as a matter of him hearing footsteps from the case of fear, it was just that he no. wanted to get uh, yeah, high he, gear. And yeah, he wanted to turn up field too quickly. You watch the pro games tomorrow and you'll see the same things. That'll happen. Second and ten. Rogers long motion. Oh, Mathis battling with Davis, the man who made that interception. Well, that interception was a big play in this game. The score was 20 to 14 at that point. The Lobos were were moving along. And the Lobos and then had Davis stopped picked it off yeah. and uh, turned it into a 28-14 from a 20 to 14 game to a 28-14 game in just the blink of an eye. Undeniably a turning point in this game. You're right. They're going for it. Oh, no, it's third down. Excuse me. Don't get excited. Third Gary. and ten. Three-man rush for Tennessee. Going to cover with eight. The Lobos go short and got the first down. As Burgess goes to no man's land. Got the screen pass. You mentioned earlier about Burgess catching 37 passes last year, but that was as a wing back. Now he's the deep back in the in the in the uh, wishbone. In, excuse me, in both the wishbone and the run and shoot. So the screen is the pass he'll be catching, and there he makes the first down of his first one this year. On the 49 of the Lobos, first and 10. Boy, that's a big third down conversion there. And that is Whitehead with the catch and some nice footwork to the 19-yard line. Kenneth showed his strength there. There was a man draped all over him. There was no containment on Billy because Burgess blocked the containment right there. So Billy could walk if he wants and get the first. But he sees Whitehead open. Now, there is strength, folks. There is strength. Whitehead, 6'3", 200-pound junior from Detroit. Rucker loses the exchange from center. Lobos still have it. Number 62 is Terrence Donaldson. Offensive left guard, weighs 258, a junior out of Detroit. Let's mention the Lobo offensive interior. Uh, Steve Parr, left tackle, 261 senior. The right guard, Brian McCabe, 243 pound sophomore. Right tackle, Barry Luther, 233 pound sophomore. Offensive interior linemen seldom get mentioned. And Rucker.
Walker keeps it. And it's going to be third and several yards to go. Just under nine minutes to play. You know, I don't believe Billy had control of the ball coming out of coming out from under center that time, too. I think for two plays in a row there, uh, he had some trouble handling the snap, or he would have gotten a little bit more. Ned James coming on for Arbon. Third down. It's about eight. And at the 17, flags as Billy Rucker is tackled for a loss. Let's see what the flags are all about. Mark Kovanek made the tackle. Confusion. 255-pound defensive right tackle. We couldn't see it in our replay because both wing backs went in motion. Only one man can go in motion, thus the procedure penalty. Tennessee will probably elect to to, uh, to uh, deny this, making making it fourth down. But but this is four down territory. The situation in the game and the position on the field dictates this is a fourth down try. So expect the Lobos to go for it. And we have a timeout here. With 8.16 to go, Tennessee leads 35-14. Lobos tape facing fourth down. Watch the Lobos begin their quest for the WAC title as they battle the tough BYU Cougars live from BYU Stadium next Saturday at noon on KGSW TV Channel 14. And based on their performance here tonight, Gary, uh, I don't think anybody better count the Lobos out of the WAC race. No, sir. -y. I think they're going to surprise some people. I think they surprised... Uh, uh, Tennessee for three quarters and there's still some to play here yet they have to score this time to to put Tennessee's uh, starters back on the field but I think if that happens we'll see it Ned James goes off the field and Arbonne is back on and it is fourth down and about 11 to go at the Tennessee 20 and the Lobos are going to go for the whole enchilada they trailing by 21 they don't want a field goal here oh batted down by Dale Jones Dale Jones, number 54, batted it down, and that just provides a perfect opening for a story from the Sugar Bowl, or uh, from the Alabama game last year. The game against Alabama, number 54, Jones deflected a Mike Shula pass, but he didn't let it just go there. After he deflected it, he intercepted it, and it was a big play in the game against yeah. Alabama, won by Tennessee. He was on his knees when he intercepted. Another coincidence is Shula's a left-handed passer uh, like Rucker, and it looked like that same play. First and 10, Tennessee at their 20 now with 8.09 to go. Look for Tennessee just to keep it on the ground and burn the clock. William Howard on the carry. Yeah, I think we'll see uh, off tackles, power plays, maybe a sweep here and there. I doubt if Tennessee will try to put the ball in the air at this point with a three touchdown lead. Football madness here in Tennessee, all started by General Bob Neeland, who came here as an ROTC instructor, then got involved coaching the team. Came here in 1926. Complete. It's going to be third and about nine. Seven twenty-five to go. Clock stop. Kirkendall on the coverage. Bob Neeland took Tennessee to a national championship. Took them to many victories. His 1939 team was the last team in NCAA history to be unscored upon in regular season play. General Neeland coached here for many many years. Went away during World War II. But he is the originator of this just fantastic football situation in Tennessee. Of course, the fact that they do not have a professional team in this area has something to do with the great interest in the University of Tennessee team. Pete Panusco on the tackle. This Tennessee stadium holds 91,200 and some odd. They're planning another expansion in about uh, 1990 which would take it up somewhere around 105 to 110,000. That would make it the largest stadium of all. Michigan Stadium holds 101,000 plus. I covered a game at Michigan Stadium when there were 104,800 there. 
Fourth down and punt. Middle of the fourth quarter. Mathis at his 45. Dances into Tennessee territory to the 47. And we're going to take a quick break and then back for the Lobo Drive. Here's a 15-yard penalty against New Mexico. After the punt return, clipping. Clipping during the return, the penalty from the end of the kick return. Takes it back 15 yards to just inside the Lobo 38. The score 35-14, Tennessee leads. Tennessee led 17-7 at halftime, so both teams have just about doubled their point production as what it was at the end of the first half. Mathis, watch for the pitch to Mathis. Rucker keeps, had the option of pitching to Mathis, and boy, he got about nine yards out of that little situation. That's right. <clears throat> well, he was running into the sideline, which gave uh, Mathis no a, a, an inadequate pitch relationship. But, uh, heck, when you can get nine yards, take it. Nine yards of play. Second and one. The Lobos may not come out on the winning end of this thing, but they've gained a lot of experience and maturity. I believe so. I believe you're right. And so far, apparently nobody hurt. I believe they're a stronger team overall than they were last year, unquestionably. I don't believe anybody's gotten hurt. I don't recall it. I haven't seen. There have been a, a, a few people on both sides get the wind knocked out of them, but uh, no one's been carried off the field. It's been played very hard. But, you know, the defense hasn't been spectacular, but but Tennessee has had to fight and claw for all they get, with the exception of that uh, interception return. They're in the wishbone set now. That was so productive for them. Pitch to Rodgers. The old wishbone. Texas ran that so well for so many years. Coach Emery Ballard designed it. Well, I've never seen anybody execute that quarterback on it any better than Billy Rucker. Not any better than Billy. You're right. I agree with you there. Not Bart Weiss or any of the great ones that uh, Air Force has had. And they, they run the wishbone better than anybody in the country in the past four or five years. Well, I covered Texas games for many, many years, University yeah. of Texas, and I never saw anybody run it any better than Billy. <laughs> Intended for Rodgers. Coverage by Andre Kramer. There was a breakdown there because you saw Mathis running right behind Billy Rucker. Uh, that shouldn't be. Mathis should either be in the pattern or blocking. Probably in the pattern. And I think he was to be a crossing receiver in there. But he came back in motion and was running behind Billy, which does no good. Second and 10 on the Tennessee 43. 5.19 to go. Tennessee leads 35 to 14. Ned James split into the right. Join us next Saturday at 12 noon from Provo, Utah, as the Lobos meet BYU. BYU beat Utah State 45-0 today. Rodgers to the short side, to the 38. Got five. Charles Davis on the stop. All right, now as he reads, he, he, he watches the tackle close, comes out, they force him to pitch. Now, Glenn actually had more space inside, but if he goes inside, the clock stops. So I think he made the right decision in going outside and then thereby stopping the clock. Um, excuse me, if he goes inside, the clock continues. On the 38, third and five. Burgess, close to a first down. Dale Jones on the tackle, aided by Mike Whitehead. Johnny Major says of Dale Jones that he knows of no football player who has more desire to play for his team than Dale Jones. It's fourth and one. Rucker to Rodgers. I think he got it. But it's close. You know, when Tennessee lines up, they're playing so wide for these options now. On that fourth and one, if he'd have just done a quarterback sneak, he would have gotten at least five yards there. Sometimes that's your quarterback is given an option. If he sees that, just take it. 
First and ten, Lobos on the Tennessee 33. 4.35 to go, go and counting. And a new troop in for the Lobos at fullback. Number 30, Vaughn Simmons, a 5'11", 210-pound junior from Altadena, California. Gary, we need to look and see if we can see uh, Burgess at the sideline and see whether he is possibly shaken up or he didn't I see somebody over uh, yeah they're working on him he's standing up at the see the north 45 looks like toe deem or one of the his assistants back to the action here and complete to whitehead on the five down to the four yard line Burgess is standing up and they uh, seem to be working on uh, their tape. His right leg or something. Apparently he's okay. You can't really tell. We're not going to try to do a diagnosis from 100 yards away. Nice pass. Nice reception here by uh, Kenneth Whitehead. First and goal for the Lobos with 340 to go. That is Simmons going in for the touchdown. And that is the third Lobo touchdown out of the wishbone for the fullback. Simmons is strong. He comes in with great credits. He was recruited as a freshman by USC. But uh, USC usually rich in tailbacks. Uh, for some reason, he, he left USC, went to uh, junior college, finished junior college, and transferred to UNM. 210 pounds, 5'11", junior. Vaughn Simmons scores. And Bell will try the extra point, 335 to go. Once again, the hush, Connie. The score, Tennessee 35. And now the Lobos, 21. Lobos within 14 points. Three minutes and 35 seconds left. Very nice drive by the offense. Watch a great interconference matchup as the Lobos travel to Jones Stadium in Lubbock, Texas, two weeks from tonight to take on the Texas Tech Red Raiders. It'll be live right here. Don't miss the action. Saturday, September 20th, 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time on KGSW-TV, Channel 14. Where'd everybody go? There's no players at all on the field right now. No one's left the stadium yet. Hey, that's weird. Good shot of Jim, let's see. Jim Berryman? Is Jim? Yes. Yeah, that's Jim Berryman, the uh, Lobos defensive coordinator. He was an NAIA All-American at uh, Livingston College in Alabama, and they won the national championship one year. About half a dozen of their players uh, were drafted for the pros. New Mexico's touchdown drive, 65 yards and 10 plays. Johnny Majors still got some work to do tonight. He's not unconcerned at this point. If, if, if Tennessee makes that first offensive mistake and turns the ball over to UNM and UNM pushes in another quick score, which they would have adequate time to do, uh, it would make this situation tense again. Tennessee has drawn nine men up close, anticipating an onside kick. You said he's not unconcerned. Do you think he's concerned? Yes. <laughs> All coaches are concerned, as long as the clock's running. And here is the onside kick. The man with the hands got it. And Tennessee owns it at the Lobo 47. Very generous bounce. Fielded well, but it was a nice, nice Charles bounce. Benton fielded it. And the Lobo's total offense tonight, 392 yards. 255 rushing, 137 passing on 10 for 23 in the air. 41 rushes. High formation. Ooh, flanker to the right side. They shift into a pro set. There's a flag on the play. And that might be an illegal shift as Howard takes it for close to 10. Could be nullified. It's an illegal shift by Tennessee. The man who shifted from tailback into the Right halfback position didn't set long enough. No. It's got to stop for a full second. You know, I'd like to point something out. Tennessee has not substituted on offense yet. They are uh, staying with their people. They want to grind out another score here. 
Tennessee's total offense is 387. So it's a penalty against Tennessee, five yards. Good look at Stevenson, 25. First and 15. Howard gets to about the 49, maybe the 48. The clock is a big factor now, 311, 3-10. Left in the fourth quarter. Philip Vaughn made the tackle for New Mexico. Sophomore from Batesville, Mississippi. Just outside the Lobo 48, second and about 12 for Tennessee. 252. Tennessee grinding out the clock now with a 14-point lead, 35 to 21. Interesting to see if they'll put it in the air here. Second and long. Ooh, a juggle by the tailback. And the quarterback Francis pounces on it. And it's going to be third in about 23. Third and 22 for Tennessee. Tennessee's bounces have all gone their way as once again. Uh, <laughs> oh, and reaching. Oh, he did get it in. Look at that. Tennessee has seven home games this year, including this one. Last year, they drew about 658,000 in seven home games. Miller carries. Short yardage. It'll be third and a bunch, about 14, with 148 to play as Joe Sells made the tackle. I've been and impressed. The clock quickly running down now. I've been impressed with Joe Sells tonight. For a guy who was uh, running back two years ago and a tight end last year, he's done a magnificent job. Tennessee's probably going to let the clock run, uh, use the 25 seconds, take a five-yard penalty, and then punt. It's down to 128. Tennessee in a leisurely huddle. Facing fourth down at about 14. Would you call it casual huddle? Yeah, I would. I would agree with that. There is a flag for uh, delay of game here now, and they let the clock run down to 114. It will not start until the snap. And then the Lobos have a, hundred, uh, a minute and 14 seconds to make one of the epic comebacks of all time. It would be epic. Tennessee 35, New Mexico 21. KGSW-TV will be bringing you eight Lobo football games this year. The first three on the road, the five home games. Nice boot by Garmin. Oh, what a bounce. And knocked into the end zone for the touchback. Gorgeous kick by Garmin. It really was, and there was pressure on by, by Donnie Gassaway, I believe, who almost blocked that kick. We can see, we can see a replay coming, but uh, there was pressure. That was a fine kick under pressure. It'll be first and 10 for the Lobos with 102 to go. They're at their 20. Rucker is set behind Maney in the center. Looking for Whitehead. Is it intercepted? Looks like it is by uh, Terry Brown. Double coverage on Whitehead. And Billy Rucker threw it into the storm. And Tennessee takes it. The reason there's double coverage on Whitehead is that Terrence Mathis got knocked down by the linebacker. And so the safety could come over and help the cornerback and he's the one that ended up with the ball. Okay, we can't see Mathis. He has been knocked down, but he would have occupied the safety so that it was one-on-one. -on -one. And when it's a two-to-one situation, one of the two usually ends up with the ball. So Tennessee has it with 53 seconds to go and a 14-point lead.
quickly, what's your appraisal of the Tennessee team, Gary? A team that is ranked well, number 10 in the preseason polls. Lobos call timeout. I think they're very sound. Uh, I think they have some work to do on defending against the triple option, of course. But uh, as I said, they, they made no mistake but hurt themselves. They're very sound. They're offensively, defensively kicking game. The strength of their team is supposed to be their defense, and that is where uh, they have, that's where New Mexico has, has attacked them very well. Jolie Dunn, I believe, we just saw on the sideline, I believe that he's quite, I, I'm, I'll be surprised if he doesn't say that he was satisfied with the Lobos' effort and uh, what he saw tonight as predictive of some, some good things. I think they'll surprise some people. And I, I'm not saying that, you know, as a Lobo fan, I'm saying that analytically because uh, their offense is, uh, has generated a lot, and this is this could be a national champion type team they're playing today. Our thanks to UTV and the director Ernie Robertson up here in Tennessee. Tennessee folks have done a magnificent job, and the hospitality has been splendid. Francis takes the snap. They're going to let that clock run some more. 39 seconds left in the game, and rolling is Johnny Majors. Has his 61st win at Tennessee. 58% wins in 18 years as a head coach, Iowa State, Pitt, and Tennessee. He was a major college coach of the year, the same year that his father, Shirley, was a small college coach of the year. A legendary family. Johnny, Bill, and Bobby played here at the University of Tennessee. 15 seconds left in the game, and this will probably be the last play of the game right here. You're right. Johnny Majors is an institution here. He's sort of like homegrown tomatoes to Tennessee. He is an institution. And Johnny Majors goes over to shake hands with Joe Lee Dunn. And the game is over. And Tennessee has defeated New Mexico 35 to 21. Total offense for Tennessee. There's Billy Rucker and Johnny Majors congratulating Billy Rucker. Tennessee's total offense unofficially 385 yards for the Lobos unofficially 392 yards. The Lobos outgained Tennessee. Tennessee had 145 on the ground, 240 in the air. The Lobos 255 on the ground, 137 in the air. Gary, your quick summary of the game. Well, I think it's all, I think it's all very, uh, very exciting for the Lobos. I, I'm sincere when I say that. They came out this with nobody apparently injured. They played a, a, a fine team, perhaps a potential national champion to the hilt. It's really a fine performance by the Lobos. I think they can stand tall and proud as they come back to Albuquerque. They will arrive tomorrow night at the Albuquerque International Airport at 829 on United Airlines. Watch, watch what Johnny Majors has to say about the Lobo team in these post-game interviews. I, it'll be very complimentary. So the final score, the Tennessee Volunteers 35, the New Mexico Lobos 21. Now this is Connie Alexander for Gary Nance saying good night from the University of Tennessee. Lobo Football on Channel 14 was brought to you in part by Ajax Mobile Homes. We trade for anything of value, no mother-in-laws please. By Coors Premium Beer, the beer with a difference worth tasting. Coors is the one. And by Coors Light, the Silver Bullet. There's no slowing down with the Silver Bullet. More Lobo football next Saturday.